Good, good afternoon, and thank you for joining us. This is No Sound Bites Allowed, and I am your host, Michael Voss, Dragon of the Southern Tier. I'm happy to be here with you, April 17th, 2022. It is Easter, and it is Sunday, which means this is our Sunday live stream with you, starting at 2.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I am happy to be here with all of our audience. If this is the first time you're joining us, thank you. I am happy to have you as part of our audience. So, there are so much that's been going on. For those who do celebrate Easter, I want to wish you a very happy Easter. Uh, for those who do not, I hope it is a day that is finding you with peace around the world. That is always our hope in every episode that we do. Uh, if you haven't been here before, we cover long-form political commentary. And we're going to be talking about a lot of the things that are happening, not just in the United States, but around the world. And I, I've found some things this week that are so amazing. Hello, and I want to say thank you to our, our guest. Our first person speaking today is Mike Bowie. Hello, Mike, and thank you for joining us. And I'm very happy to have you there. Let me move myself over a little bit. so. Everybody can see the comments. And uh, I hope you're having a great Easter, Mike. I hope you and your family are enjoying it. Um, so there's some really interesting things that we have found to speak about today. Of course, we are always open to speak about anything that you want to. You can always call into 607-242-1582. Our phone lines are live with you now. Um, but there's just so much news that just isn't out there right now. Hang on. Just want to say happy Easter to everyone. Uh, there's just so much news that passes by that just gets ignored, that gets thrown to the wayside. And it's amazing because it has so much of an impact on each and every one of our lives. And I'll give you a quick example of what I'm talking about, starting right off. Since the beginning of the year, we have been talking continuously and warning people about the bird flu that is going around the United States. It has already uh, taken, there's been over 20 million chickens and turkeys that have been destroyed, an unknown number of ducks as well. But this is something that is affecting everywhere in the United States. It is now in 30 states. If you've been following us since January, we started off with like three states. It's now in 30 states and most recently being found in Pennsylvania and in Utah. So if you have chickens, this is important. And I know a lot of the audience do have chickens now. They're raising them for their own eggs to help with the cost of inflation. And this is important because this is going to affect inflation. It's food. The cost of poultry is going to be going up. So I hope everyone is paying attention to this that you've been taking preparations, if you have a deep freezer, if you have the ability, buy extra chicken now, the cost is going to be going higher and eggs are going to be going up as well. And you probably noticed that in, your, in the latest Easter egg hunt that you may have done yesterday or earlier today. Dow says, blessed Easter. Oh no, what is the future of Easter eggs? Well, you have to go with the chocolate Easter, Easter eggs. There used to be a great chocolate uh, chocolate shell with peanut butter in it, Easter egg. It was really great. I forgot who made it. It wasn't, it wasn't Reese's, but it was someone else, and they had a great one. I haven't had that in a long time. Well, hopefully you've been able to have chocolate Easter eggs, if you can, uh, because I know the cost of eggs are going up. And as I said, this bird flu is serious. And we have to keep an eye out, by the way, not just for the bird flu, but there was a case of the bird flu being transferred to human being. It was in last year in Russia, Moscow, I believe. And so there is one confirmed case of that. We haven't heard anyone speak about it again, but that is something to keep in mind. It is a concern around the world, and this is a global bird flu, avian flu, that is affecting chicken and chicken prices across the globe. Again, as we have been saying since the beginning of the year, inflation is continuing to go higher. You've seen that with the latest uh, numbers that showed 11% in consumer pricing. 
We don't believe that's the top. We believe it's going to go at least to 15%. We've been warning you about that. Please, when you go out and buy things, don't panic. Just buy about 10% more of everything that you use. Best case scenario, if there's a shortage in food or the prices are too high, you have extra food. Worst case scenario, you have extra food you can donate to the homeless in your local area. It's a win-win. It cannot hurt. Please consider doing that. Dow mentions, yes, they are. What's the incident rate of infection commercial versus private flocks? Has it been reported? It has not. Although uh, I can tell you that in the most recent reporting, which is in Utah, that, that was a backyard flock that was found to have the bird flu. Um, most of the cases that I have seen, at least 15 states are reporting it in their commercial flocks. So it's hard to tell with individuals because not every person with a backyard chicken farm has uh, testing on a regular basis. So please just be very aware and pay attention to your chickens so that you'll be better off on that. Better to be safe and be aware than to be sorry. So we wanted to talk a little bit about that. And that's something that I, I think we're one of the few channels on YouTube, one of the few news media outlets that is actually talking about the bird flu on a regular basis across the nation. And it has grown. At this point, it's in 30 states. I would advise you, consider it as if it's in every state in the nation. It's across the world. You're better off just assuming that. And speaking of medicine, something else to keep an eye out for. Did you guys hear that the World Health Organization, the WHO, is investigating cases of kids, healthy kids, that have severe liver damage? That they are, there's something going around that's affecting children. It's in the United Kingdom, the United States, Ireland, and Spain. And it's acute hepatitis. But it's not from any of the strains of hepatitis. This is something that is rare, but yet been happening. Over 79 children have had this, which is why they're now investigating this in the United States and across the world. Um, and these are affecting kids who are under 10. And I stand corrected, 74 cases. And these are affecting kids who are under the age of 10. Now, nobody knows exactly what's causing this. There's nothing that's linking the children within each country. There's no, nothing that's linking the kids from one country to another country. Everyone's trying to figure out what's going on here. Uh, it is liver failure, and it is something that is being looked at. They believe that it might have something to do with adenovirus, ADPH. Um, that's coming out of Alabama, but there's no com confirmation on that. But we do know that Stat News, citing a scientific article on the case in Scotland, said that the pandemic may have played a role, noting that kids impacted may not have been exposed to a variety of germs during the pandemic and therefore were more susceptible to becoming ill once the mandates have been eased. And yes, Mike, I had that same question, but since I cannot speak on that subject without having this channel shut down by YouTube, I cannot answer your question, Michael. But it is something to be of concern that it's affecting children under the age of 10. It's now happening, and they're saying that, again, Stat News has said it's because the kids weren't out playing, getting regular colds like everyone does, and therefore, that made them more susceptible. The question of uh, any other sources related to the pandemic that may be affecting children, we don't know yet, but I don't know if I'd be surprised. Dow mentions it's probable that if you're bringing in chicks from a breeding facility, such as through a tractor supply, the source of those bred chicks are going to be a vector of infection. And I agree. Might be a good idea to quarantine purchased chicks until they can be tested before placing them into your main flocks. And I agree with that, and I do think that's important. Uh, so I did want to make you aware of these two things that I don't, I don't think are getting enough attention. And definitely, this new news from the WHO about this liver damage to children, that's very concerning. So parents out there, be very aware. And 
According to Stat News, and in Scotland, one thing that may be good for your kids is just let them get outside, run around with other kids, and get a cold. You know, like they did when I was a kid. We went outside, we ran around, we, got, we all got colds. And we played in the mud, and we didn't wipe our hands with hand sanitizer every 15 seconds, and we built up natural immunities. Natural immunity is always important. It's a suggestion. I'm not a medical doctor. We're not giving you medical advice. But in my lifetime, I'm now 54. I played in the mud. I ate dirt. I ran around with my friends. We got colds on a regular basis, and we built up natural immunities. It worked for me to to be 54. It's up to you how to want, how you want to raise your children and your medical professionals. You speak to them. So that's two just. PSAs. We like to do some PSAs sometimes, telling you about things that are affecting everyone in the world that you may not be hearing from your regular news media. Uh, Dow mentions, what was your favorite toy? Dirt and we are happy. Uh, Well, uh, we used to have, uh, we used to tie rubber bands onto broomsticks with clothespins. And so we would shoot the rubber bands at each other with clothespins. And so you could get like, three or four of them on a broomstick and shoot them off at each other. That's what we did when we were kids. That was in the 1970s. So, you know, I don't know if kids would have fun with that today, but we had a great time. Kind of like cops and robbers, but we didn't have guns. We couldn't afford bows and arrows. So we just got rubber bands on broomsticks with clothespins. Simple, easy. We had a great time with it. I remember it. It was fun. Uh, so that was one of my favorite toys. Uh, Mike mentioned survival of the fittest. We always played outside. I think it's important. Get the kid, sunshine, fresh air. It never hurts. It never hurts if you can do it. Um, so let me shift from that and talking about the health care of children and the health care of chickens and just being healthy in general to our political health. And this is a political channel. You probably shouldn't be surprised. Uh, Dow mentions his son carried on the tradition of stick fights. He's proud. Well, hey, we, yeah, we did some stick fighting too, but mostly shooting the rubber bands. So let's talk about our political health. And I want to start off with, again, things that you're probably not hearing, things that are not being discussed with you at this moment. And do you remember, do you remember that the Lieutenant Governor of New York, Lieutenant Governor Benjamin, a progressive who was put on, uh, who was given the position by Kathy Holchel to appeal to two large groups, blacks and progressives. And he's the man who said he doesn't believe, he believes in bail reform. You wonder why he believes in bail reform? Because he's a criminal. Because he has now resigned his position And how many Democrats in a row is that for New York State where we've lost lieutenant governors and governors because of scandals, because of crime, because they got indicted? How many in a row? Is that five in a row now? It's ridiculous. This is insane. And Kathy Hochul, of course, is saying she had no idea about any of this, that she's completely innocent of this, that this is a shock and a surprise to her. Well, let's think about this. Kathy Hochul get a background check on, on, ben, on Brian Benjamin. She knew about him. Democrats in the rest of New York State and in New York City knew this man. They knew what he was doing. They were very well aware of it. You mean to tell me that no one in the Democratic Party, no one on the background check team for Kathy Holchel, nobody had any idea that this guy was having finance campaign, uh, campaign finance irregularities, that it didn't come up ever, that this is a shock and an amazement that no one, no. Come on, New York State is now in the middle of Tammany Hall 2.0. This is one of the most corrupt, continuous governments we have seen in New York State and in most states in, in decades. This is insulting. What's going on here? And these are the people who are telling us, no, they're going to protect us. They're going to take care of us, that they, they're on top of everything. If you can't figure out that your lieutenant governor 
has irregularities in his campaign finances. If you can't figure that out, then how are you supposed to handle the New York State budget? How are you, why is it that you're promoting bail reform and all these changes to our, to our state that are supposed to help us by people who are criminals? Or let me be fair, an alleged criminal, he hasn't been convicted yet. So he's an alleged criminal. So bad is the evidence that he had to pull out. He had to resign. And down the Democrats are all worried about, well, what are we going to do? He's on the ticket. He's on the ticket with Kathy Hochul. So it makes us look bad. It makes it look like we're connected to this guy who's who's under indictment for campaign finance crimes. This is literally what the Democratic Party is worried about right now is that they're going to be connected to him because of the fact that he he had to resign. And they're like, oh, this is so bad for the ticket. Wait a minute. It's bad for New York State. Let's start there. They're worried about the politics in 2022. They should be worried about the fact that they didn't do a background check, that one of their prominent Democrats was committing campaign finance, that he was crooked. This is the problem. The problem isn't that he got caught. The problem is that he committed the crime. They're upset that he got caught and that he got caught in an election year. This is the problem. When we have, when we are looking at our politicians and the biggest problem that any political party or any politician has is that they got caught for doing a crime, we have a problem here. And the news media should be screaming from the top of the hills, What's wrong with the Democratic Party under appointed Governor Kathy Hochul? Just as they should have been at the very beginning having a problem with disgraced Governor Andrew Cuomo and saying, wait a minute, what, what's going on with all these sexual assaults? 11 sexual assaults. You mean to tell me no one knew about it? No one in the Democratic Party, no one in the news media, nobody had any clue that he had made 11 sexual assaults. That's a lie. That's a lie. New York politics is pretty tight. Politicians know each other, and they know their, each other's lives, and they know each other's teams, and the teams talk to each other because they have to, because we have legislation that we have to pass. So you can't tell me they didn't know. They knew about the 16,000 people that were killed in nursing homes under Andrew Cuomo because Andrew Cuomo's secretary told the Democratic Party in a, in a meeting held privately away from the public and told them that they had withheld evidence from the FBI because they had violated. It was a, a violation and that there was a scandal here. They told them that. So you can't tell me they didn't know Andrew Cuomo wasn't corrupt at the beginning. And you can't tell me that they didn't know that Lieutenant, Brian, Lieutenant Governor Brian Benjamin wasn't corrupt and that he had problems. They knew it. They just don't care because they didn't get caught. And if they don't get caught, then it's not a big deal. And their only, and their only concern is, well, we have to do something about this him on the ticket because it looks bad. It may cost us votes. It should cost you votes because you're corrupt. You are backing corrupt people. And I can't believe that Kathy Hochul had no idea about this. Now, if there is anyone who thinks that Kathy Hochul is doing a fantastic job, that she's completely innocent, that she is snow white and she is just innocent as the driven snow, and there is no way that she could have possibly known about the corruption of her former boss and the guy who answers to her, then please call in, tell me why. I will treat you with utmost respect. I want to hear your sources that can tell me why you believe that she is innocent, that she had no idea whatsoever, that her team had no idea whatsoever. But without having some evidence of that, knowing as a member of the press, knowing many people in New York state government and on both parties, actually in all the parties in New York state, yeah, they knew. That is my belief. You can tell me you think I'm wrong, but that's something else. Matter of fact, I will ask that question of everyone here.
Do you think that appointed governor Hochul Ryan Benjamin was corrupt? Do you think that? Because I certainly do. And I caught your joke there. Hello, John. John's with us as well. John Cordisco, thank you for being here. I'm happy to have you here with us today. You know what's really interesting about this? When I, and I, I want you to think about this. The news on Lieutenant Governor Brian Benjamin actually has more coverage and has been in the attention of news media. And that really hasn't been in the attention of news media, has not been presented to the public to protect many Democrats in this next election. But you know what got even less coverage? The New York subway shooting suspect, gone. All the news about him is gone. You gotta wonder about that. All the news media, all the coverage, it was the biggest news for three days and now there's nothing. We're not hearing about this prophet of doom. Possibly because the attempt by organizations like Vice News, which is a very left-leaning organization, their attempt to try and tie him to the Republican Party failed. I mean, they want everyone to think that he's a black Republican. Look at their reporting here. Uh, he glorified violence, criticized black culture, rambled on about Will Smith slapping Chris Rock, held forth on Russia's invasion of the Ukraine, I don't even know what that means. Held forth on Russia's invasion of the Ukraine. What does that mean? That's just horrible writing. And declared that global warming means that the world's population has to be reduced. Now, quite honestly, these are, several of them are left-leaning positions. Quite honestly, this is stuff that you would hear from progressives. But they want you to think that he's some kind of Republican but they can't make that story stick. So instead, the story has disappeared. Why? Well, I have to believe, excuse me, um, I have to believe it's because they know, they know for a fact that no one's buying the crap. That this was just meant to be able to push forward the idea of ghost guns. But that failed too, because he, what he did had nothing to do with ghost guns. He's not Republican, and he's not white, and he's not a uh, Christian, and he's not uh, uh, using a ghost gun. So all of this talk about how they're going to protect you with ghost guns goes out the window. All these promises that all you have to do is give up a little bit more of your Second Amendment rights goes out the window. It's not a good story because it doesn't push the message that they want you to believe. John mentions that... Um, all of the politicians that I've mentioned so far, Governor Holchul, um, Andrew Cuomo, Brian Benjamin, that they're all just innocent. They're just victims of circumstances. Just give it some time. You'll see they're really innocent. I don't know that Andrew Cuomo is innocent after the AG found 11 credible cases of sexual assault, put up, brought up the charges, and then dropped them for no apparent reason. That the 16,000 people that died, we knew this was a cover-up, we knew that he did it, and they just dropped it. No, they're not victims of circumstance, they're victims of being caught. They're really bad criminals. And the only thing that's protecting them is the fact that they have a D after their name, that they're politicians of the right party in this bluer than blue state, and they are being protected on high. That's what the problem is. Yes, I know, John. I know it was sarcasm. But I mean, there's a lot of Democrats out there. There's a lot of people in the center, centrist, independents. They actually think it's true. They think it, that these people are actually just acts, that they aren't criminals, that they haven't done anything wrong, that they're absolutely innocent because the news media would tell them. They're like, well, CNN would tell me if they were a criminal, wouldn't they? CNN, MSNBC, uh, ABC, and, uh, CBS, they would all tell me if, he would, if they were criminals, if they did something wrong. I would have seen it in a headline that would have said that they're guilty. Except 
you know, read past the headline, read into the stories, and yeah, these people are corrupt as hell. I mean, it's so obvious that even Tim Young had mentioned corporate media committed exponentially more time to the Jussie Smollett case be, um, before it was confirmed as a hoax than the real Brooklyn subway shooting and the Wakusha massacre. Do you remember the Wakusha massacre? Remember the guy, the black man who got in his car and it was Christmas and drove through a Christmas parade targeting the white parade goers and he was targeting them with his car before he got stopped. Do you remember that case that disappeared from the news media because it didn't match the message? And what was he? A progressive. A progressive who believes and has been absorbing all of this critical race theory, intersectionality, uh, gender identity politics, this whole black superiority message that is out there saying that white people are evil by birth and that black people are victims by birth, and therefore he needed to do something. That whole got, remember that whole massacre disappeared from the news media, gone. Don't want to talk about it. Nothing to, as you say, John, nothing to see here. It's just not important. You know, there's so much that's going on right now that the news media is deeming as not important. Now, they are telling you about it, but they don't think it's important. They don't think it's important enough for you to actually pay attention to. I'll give you a great example. Here's a case that really, I, I got shocked. I just found this just before the show. There is a Democrat, a progressive Democrat, who is running for Congress. She's running for the Pennsylvania 3rd District. Her name is Alexandra Hunt. Now, Ms. Hunt describes herself as a public health researcher, a grass, grassroots organizer, gee, we hear a lot about those these days, a soccer coach who is running for the Pennsylvania 3rd District, and she's not accepting corporate money. Sounds great, right? Sounds pretty straightforward, except she's funding her race by doing OnlyFans because she's getting naked and in sexual positions and poses on OnlyFans for people to watch. I mean, that's what OnlyFans is known for, that women get on OnlyFans and gay men go on OnlyFans and they have sexual poses and pornographic images of themselves and people pay them to be able to see them on a regular basis. And this is how she's paying her bills. This is how she's running for Congress. She's a progressive Democrat that believes that the pornography, which, if I remember correctly, the Me Too movement tells us that, well, pornography is an abuse against women, that it even exists is an abuse against women. And yet, a progressive is using that very same pornography that the third wave, fifth wave feminists despise. She's using that to be able to run for Congress. Can you believe that? I mean, did you see this news? Because it's serious. It's been reported by the Daily Mail, and she admits it. It's not like, oh, this is a secret. She tells you, well, that was fast. No sooner did my OnlyFans go up than a Daily Mail story about it came out. Thanks for the coverage. Hope you left a tip. She thinks this is a good thing. She thinks this is positive. Can you imagine that? This is where our politics has come to. At least, this is where progressive politics has come to. That, that having an OnlyFans, which is known for women to be scantily clad and perhaps even in sexual positions, that this is her way of running for Congress. Now, she is a former stripper, so I'm sure she has plenty of body positivity. And I'm not telling you that she has an ugly body. I don't know. I don't use OnlyFans. I've never been on it. All I know is that she is very happy about this, that this is her means to be able to get into politics. Now, it, you know what? I understand. Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez was a bartender. We have 
people who are nurses and car salesmen that are in Congress. Fantastic. I'm not telling you that a stripper or an ex-stripper can't be a member of Congress. I'm not saying that. But when I see a, someone who is looking to be in Congress that is using pornography to be able to promote and, and to fund their race, then there's a problem there. Do you think she might be a little bit corrupt? Do you think that she might accept some money because if she were to be elected to Congress in Pennsylvania, that she might accept bribes? I mean, she's willing to sell her body in terms of photography to be able to get, uh, to be able to get her election. So imagine what else she might do. She will make Brian Benjamin look like a saint. And this is from the Democratic Party. These are Democrats that are doing that. I mean, God forbid if a Republican tried this, God forbid a Libertarian tried this, the media would be demonizing them all day long, saying that they cannot run, that these people were absolutely immoral, and that there is a problem, and they had to be booted out of any race that they couldn't even consider running. But a Democrat, a Democrat woman, who's running, well, if she wants to sell images of her body in sexually explicit positions, well, that's okay. It's not a big deal. It's not like that's a signal, a red flag for corruption on the rise, that she gets in, that she's going to be anything but an honest broker for her people. I, I have a big problem with this. And when I say that she's a progressive, I want you to understand, again, I am going to her own words. And she said to de uh, today, April 17th, something that her opponents and many establishment Democrats are not talking about is harm reduction. This is a big issue. By the way, this is another one of the things that Brian Benjamin, the progressive in New York, was supporting. This is something that Eric Adams, a progressive, the progressive mayor of New York City, Support. This is something that we see Alexandria Ocasio Cortez, Corey Bush, the squad, they support this. This is a progressive issue. As a public health researcher and a stripper on OnlyFans, a stripper and on OnlyFans, she knows that harm reduction can actually solve the problems that prohibition based drug policies have failed to solve. So she wants you to have drugs. Drugs are good for you. We are taking the, the advice she wants to go into Congress and to help ensure that people will be able to get the drugs that they want, that destroy communities and families and individual lives, and she wants to be able to fund herself through Congress. This is just, I can't make this up. I am highly disturbed by this. John says, it'll be a lot more fun at the congressional Christmas parties. Well, if she's there, for sure. I'm sure when she has a birthday party or anyone, maybe when Chuck Schumer has a birthday party, she'll be inside the cake. Ooh, what a Democratic soiree that will be. John goes on to say, the problem though, her bribes are only a dollar at a time. Yeah, they're going to have to put them all in the G-string for her to be able to take all the bribes. Oh, God help me. Uh, Dow says, same people that decry porn as objectifying and demeaning also condemn detractors of sex workers as stifling women's entrepreneurial opportunities. If she would be elected, she would never be able to lecture from a morality standpoint. Well, that's for sure. But then again, she's not looking for morality. She's looking to promote drugs. And she's obviously, well, her big problem is going to be the feminist. Her problem is going to be the Me Too movement. She's going to have a problem with these individuals who are saying that she's objectifying herself and therefore demeaning all women because that's what we hear from the left, that this is objectification and it demeans women and it reduces and takes away from anyone taking her seriously. And I have to be honest, I don't take her seriously now. I, I, I didn't take her seriously as a progressive but I take her even less seriously 
knowing that she's a progressive and on OnlyFans. I'm not even going to hold the fact that she was a stripper against her. Lots of women do it. They make money at it. They paid to become lawyers and judges and all that. Fine. They get through med school, whatever. Okay. I'm not going to hold someone back for having a job that's a legal p position. I'm not going to hold that against her. But the only fans in a congressional campaign, yeah, that I'm going to hold against her. And would I hold it against a Republican? Absolutely. Male or female. Would I hold it against a, a libertarian? Male or female? Yes, I would. I don't care who you are in politics, but if you are on OnlyFans, yes, that's a problem. It is an in indication, a massive red flag saying you are open for sale, you are corrupt, and you are just waiting for someone to come up with a big, fat, juicy bribe. And in her case, she's looking for the big bills to go into that G-string. You know, what's her, Dow mentions, what's her platform? Sex, drugs, and rock and roll. Probably, probably. And think about it. She's not that old. She's not an older woman. This is a young woman. This is someone who just got out of college. This is someone who has just entered the workforce. She's gone out there and she went through the progressive schools. She went through the college and they taught her that this would be a great way. She's been, I don't know, someone in the, in the Democratic Socialists of America are there saying, hey, go ahead. This is a great, her campaign manager said, this is a great idea. You'll get advertising. You're going to get more press than ever. Look, the, even in England, they're telling people about your OnlyFans. This is good news? This is a good thing? And so if anyone thinks I am being sexist about this, if they think I am somehow demeaning this woman, please explain to me how am I demeaning her by telling you exactly what she did and telling you what my concerns are about someone who wants to be a politician that is taking the lowest road to the elected office. Please explain to me how this is demeaning to women more than what she has done herself. Who's going to take her seriously? Who would take it? Obviously, someone's taking her seriously. She's on the ballot. She's running for Congress. Our standards have gone that low in the United States that someone who says, I'm selling pornography at the same time that I am running for an elected office because it means that little. That her self-respect and, and, and the embarrassment she is now placing on progressives, on Democrats, on people from Pennsylvania, on women in politics, she is demeaning them all. And if you think I'm wrong, I'm perfectly, here, perfectly happy to hear you tell me why. 607 242 1582, or you can make a comment on YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter as long as the internet overlords allow me to be on. Tell me why I'm wrong. I'm happy to hear that. Or do you believe that because she's a public health researcher, whatever that job does, and a grassroots organizer, she's just like Barack Obama? She's just like Barack Obama. She's a grassroots organizer. Doesn't that make you encourage? Doesn't that make you feel better? Knowing that your local grassroots organizer has pictures of themselves scantily clad, pornographic images that are on OnlyFans. Don't, doesn't that make you feel better? Doesn't that make you feel good that this is the person who's going to be deciding what you get to learn, what your kids get to learn in school? That this is the person who's going to decide how your tax dollars are going to be spent? I'm sure every strip club in Pennsylvania is thinking, we got to get this girl in because she's going to give them subsidies. She's going to subsidize the entire stripper population of the state of Pennsylvania, possibly the entire nation. You can just see the 
the pork barrel spending rolling on out and right into the G-strings of women all across Pennsylvania. Dow brings up a very good point. On the flip side, being transparent about the path she is taking and her eagerness to have this money and the ways that she will raise the money mitigates anyone blackmailing her. So no one is going to bring up, no one can say, oh, if you tell anyone, if you, you know, pay me or I'll tell everyone that you were a stripper. Well, that's no longer an issue. She has completely deflated the question about her past as a stripper. No one's going to bring that up. But we are going to bring up what she's doing right now. And no, no one will ever hold up against her. You are in pornography. Hey, that's already old news. You can't bring that up now. What else will she do for money? Yes, I, I call into question her credibility. I call into question by her own actions everything about her. I don't think she's serious. I don't think that this is a serious race. I think she always intended to have an OnlyFans and that this was advertising for her OnlyFans. I think that she is being absolutely selfish, that this was always a selfish plan of hers to be able to get paid, to have a bunch of Democrats and progressives to give her money for being on OnlyFans, to defend her. And I, I guarantee you, before the day is over, and I don't even have to go that far, I believe, um, where is it? Here it is, Sparkle Fairy. I really hope you win. I'm already in love, respectfully. In love with her on OnlyFans? In love with her sexually explicit images? Is that what you're in love with? Okay, let's see. I, uh, here goes Sincerely uh, on TTV. I am so proud to know that you are leveraging every aspect of your working class background to run your campaign. You're amazing. Keep it up. Karma, I'm rooting for you so hard. Love is the way to go. I love this. This is fantastic press. I don't think you, I'd heard of you in two weeks ago, and now I wish I could vote for you. Really, this is what Democrats are saying. This is what the left-wing Twitter is saying. They're flocking to her saying this is a great thing, that this is fantastic, that an obvious and direct corruption of our Congress and the destruction of the morality of the United States, this is wonderful. There is no news better than this. I mean, really, I got to say it again. I'm so proud to know that you are leveraging every aspect of your working class background. What does a working class background have to do with OnlyFans? What does a, a working class background have to do with pornography? Seriously, but I, I don't know how you, hookers on, down on 42nd Street West Side were never considered working class people. And I'm sorry, I still do not consider hookers to be working class individuals. And I believe that strippers are above hookers, absolutely. Morally, not so much. But in actuality, yes, they're doing a job. But I find it is in the same vein. I do not find that to be credible. I find this to be repugnant. And maybe you think I am just wrong. I know. Some leftist is going to tell me that I am a complete misogynistic pig because I don't want a member of Congress on OnlyFans selling their body. You know what? If that gets me called a misogynist, so be it. Call me a sexist pig if you want to. But no, I don't want men or women, straight or gay, in Congress on OnlyFans. No. Sorry, don't think so, don't want that. No, I, I think it's repugnant. I think that they are corrupt, that they are doing this for selfish purposes and that they are destructive to our community and they will be horrendous in our government.
And Dal asks another great question. So subscription to our OnlyFans, is it buying votes? Is she buying votes? Because she is exchanging something of value to voters and she's asking for their money that she's using to run for Congress. You know, is that a pay for play? Could be. She's asking the Daily Mail for a tip about her congressional race. I don't understand. How does, it, how does someone look at do that and see that as being positive? How does a campaign manager, and I've worked with campaign managers, I've helped campaigns in the past privately. How is it that any candidate says this to their campaign manager, to their fundraising staff, to their co-workers, to their, to their supporters, and says, you know what? I, I, we need money for a commercial. I know what I'll do. I know what I'll do. I will take off my clothes. I will have someone take pictures of me, and I will sell that to the public. And this way, we'll be able to have a commercial to say, hey, I'm a soccer, I'm a soccer coach. Yay. A soccer coach. Ooh, gro grassroots organizing. Really? I find, it, I, I find it disgusting. And by the way, just in case you're wondering, the Pennsylvania third is not uh, a competitive race. So that means it looks like she's not going to win this. As best as I can tell, she's not a factor. But she is going to represent and I want you to see this as clearly as I can. Hang on one second. I, I just need to move myself here because I want you to see something. So she represents the Philadelphia 3rd District. Now, this is the city of Philadelphia, the Pennsylvania 3rd District. This is what she's looking to win. I want you to think about this. This is, and, and look at this carefully, this is Philadelphia, the section that she is looking to take care of. This is that same section. Now you're wondering, Mike, what is this map? Oh, sorry. So again, this is the section that she's talking about, all this right here, which is about a third, about a third, maybe half of all those little dots that you see on the screen there in terms of the heat map. This whole region right here that you're seeing, this whole region, oops, this whole region right here, this is where she wants to represent. And you're saying to yourself, well, Mike, what is that? A map of Philadelphia's gun violence. This is where all the gun crimes, 132 homicides in 2022. This is the region, 460 non-fatal shootings. One third of them are in the area that our OnlyFans, oh, excuse me, our OnlyFans candidate is going to be taken care of. She's going to be, if she gets into Congress, this woman for OnlyFans is going to be taking care of this area of crime. where people have died. Do you feel more confident now knowing that a member of Congress who's helping to decide gun crime and in gun control, that she's going to be taking care, she's representing a third of all the deaths in Philadelphia. Do you feel more confident or less confident that she's going to be capable of doing the job? Do you think people are going to take her more seriously or less seriously when she gets up there and says, you know, I got some of my OnlyFans subscribers telling me about the crime wave in their neighborhood, about the shooting that happened in their neighborhood. My OnlyFans are giving me the inside scoop of what's happening at the street level in my community. Do you think that's going to make her more credible or less credible? And I have to ask a question. Do you think that the gangs that are committing the crimes that have injured 460 people in Philadelphia, that have killed 116 people, excuse me, 132 people in Philadelphia, do you think the gangs that are responsible for that 
Do you think they're going to take her seriously? Do you think they're going to give her a bribe? Tell her, well, since you're willing to sell your body on OnlyFans, you've been a stripper, guess what? We'll give you 50 grand. Turn a blind eye. Don't pass a law that actually might hurt the criminals. Support bail reform. Legalize drugs. Do you think that they would give her money to do that? Or do you think they would say, well, she's a serious law and order kind of chick. We've got to worry about her. She's going to make our lives a lot more difficult. Which one do you think the criminals in Philadelphia, the violent felons that are committing homicides, do you, which one do you think they're going to think about her? I mean, really, this is pissing me off. And I think it should piss everyone off. Everyone should be upset about this. Hang on a second. So I ask everyone that is watching this, and if you're watching this not live, but you're seeing uh, the recording afterwards, I'm asking you to put it in the comments to tell me, do you think that criminals are going to be more or less eager to bribe Alexandra Hunt if she were to be in Congress and she has this OnlyFans? In fact, when would she ever take it down? Why would she ever take it down? She'll, if she gets in Congress, that's only for two years. She'll need to run again. She'll need to get more money to run for re-election if she were to be elected. So that means she would keep that OnlyFans up even while she's in there. Uh, can you imagine that she's, hey, here's a, maybe she'll do a photo shoot naked on the floor of Congress. Maybe she'll get on the speaker's desk and have a, a naked Photo shoot. I really cannot express how upsetting I find this. And, I, and this isn't major news. I mean, it did get to England in the Daily Mail. But looking at the United States, the mainstream media aren't covering this story. They don't want to tell you about this. I don't think most of the people in Pennsylvania, let alone Philadelphia know about this. I don't think her constituents know that she's going to be responsible for an area where a third of all the murders and shootings in Philadelphia have occurred, that she is open to bribery, that she is selfish, greedy, manipulative. That's what I get from her having an OnlyFans and running for Congress. Not because she was a stripper, because of what she's doing right now. I want to be clear about that. I'm not, I'm not banging a, a drum here because, oh my God, she was a No, I'm not going to even count the fact that she was a stripper. I'm counting the fact that she's on doing OnlyFans right now. And it's not because she's doing OnlyFans. I, I don't care if women, men, anyone wants to do OnlyFans, go on, knock yourself out. It's legal. But I do think there is something to be said about the individual who's running to be in a position of power where she will be able to legislate laws, that she will have huge power in her community to change things and to affect hundreds of 700,000 lives. Yeah, I have a problem with that. That's where my problem comes from. It's not the OnlyFans, it's not the stripping, it is definitely the character of the individual that is at play here. And I have to question the progressives that are backing her, that decided that this was a great idea and that this is the type of character of a candidate they want to have 
as part of their party and representing them in Congress. Maybe somebody thinks I've been harping on it too long. I, I, I cannot say how strongly and important that is. And I have to say, what's going on with our communities? What's going on out there? Because, I mean, this is also, do you remember seeing this? Because I did a coverage of Ben Shapiro and this kid, Quentin Merritt, at University of North Carolina at, at Greensboro. Did you look and hear what this kid had to say? The embarrassment that he provided? The insanity of what he had to talk about? That he believes black excellence, black excellence is calling names at people when you lose arguments. That he believes that. And the University of North Carolina is apparently teaching him not only about critical race theory, intersectionality. They're not only teaching him about that, but they're teaching him that the best way to have a debate is to assume titles and authority that he does not have. This kid, this kid, call him 22. He's supposedly a mathematician and a physicist but he's also a student, an undergraduate. He hasn't even gotten an undergraduate degree, but he calls himself a physicist and a mathematician, and he doesn't even understand what he's talking about. In fact, he admits, as I cover in this, and I want to be clear. Yes, he got the award. Oh, sorry, long spot. And he admits of his own volition that he did this to be malicious, that his only reason for going up to speak to Ben Shapiro is so that he could cause harm, that he wanted to be mean, that he wanted to be vicious, that he had malintent from the beginning. By the way, that violates the First Amendment. He intended to do harm. He wasn't speaking truthfully. He wasn't even saying something that he thought was true. He wasn't even speaking emotionally. He by his own admission, planned to go up and to attack Ben Shapiro because he didn't like what Ben Shapiro had to say and that he wanted to hurt Ben Shapiro, that he specifically targeted some aspects of Ben Shapiro's life to try and cause him harm and embarrassment. This is what is being taught in our universities. This is at the University of North Carolina. And this is one of the things that leads to having individuals just like Alexandra Hunt. This is where the Alexandra Hunts of the world come from. From places like the University of North Carolina, where they are teaching our students to be vicious, to be mean-spirited, to be illogical, and to assume authority just because they exist, not because they have earned it, not because they are qualified, but because of the mere fact that they happen to exist, well, then they're qualified. They can speak on any subject. Tell me how this is not destroying America. Tell me how this is not bad for America. I don't understand it. And I really, I, I do advise you, if you haven't had a chance, Please look at my coverage. The links at the end of the show, uh, put in all the links of everything we're talking about so that you can see it for yourself, so that you can see it in full context and you can come up with your own decision about it all. But I, I, I can't understand this. What are we doing to our kids? We're teaching them to be mean-spirited, to, to attack people because we don't agree with what they have to say. That qualifications and having uh, moral standards and having self-respect, they don't exist. That corruption is perfectly fine, whether it's in New York State or it's in Pennsylvania's third district or it's at the University of North Carolina. I don't get this, folks. I mean, tell me, did you, have you heard about Quentin? Have you heard about Quentin? Because I can tell you, 
that what Quentin Merritt has said, that one section that I was telling you about, his, his extended thoughts, if you go to his website, there are over 7,000 people that say, this is absolutely horrible, it's terrible, you're out of your mind. But 200, uh, 300 people said they love it. 300 people said they love what he's doing. They're happy about him being malicious and a liar. 7,000 people said no. I know that I personally have had uh, 19 people who agree with me and three people that think, well, no, Mike, you're just wrong. That he's, he's a genius. I literally have one person who told me that he is a genius. Do I have that comment up here? I want to show you. Yeah, uh, uh, this is, again, same, same section, but I want you to see how people are looking at this because they think it's important. Uh, where is it? Where is it? Oh, where is this guy? There's this one comment. It's not here. He deleted his comment. See, I'm looking at this live with you guys, so. Ah, oh, there was. Okay, so there was only one comment that was made in favor of Quentin that said that Quentin was a genius and that I was evil because I called out Quentin for being a liar and being malicious. This is the next generation of America. You're seeing it live here. Politicians that are into pornography and, and students that are claiming to be our next mathematicians and physicists, they're just making up their degrees. They're just making it up as they go and they have malicious intent. This is what America is coming to. This is what our education system is putting in front of children today. And I have to say, I, I, I don't appreciate that. And if you think I'm wrong, that education isn't going backwards. And I, I want to hear what you guys have to say. Hang on. Mike just commented and he says, I think these people are already damaged goods even before they set foot on campus. The schools only reinforce this type of behavior. And Mike, I agree with you. And you know what? You're right. Because let's take a look. In Florida, 54 books, 41% of all of the materials for students in, in the grades kindergarten through five. So kindergarten through fifth grade, we're talking about kids from roughly the age of five to 10. Five to 10 year olds are being taught critical race theory, common core. They're being taught to become racist. 41% of the textbooks, these are math books. And I, I thought this was really interesting because an Orange County Classroom Teachers Association president, Wendy Doramal, said she was baffled after learning about the rejected test books. She says, I'd really love to see some of these rejected books and see what they highlighted and found disturbing in these books. Here's the key part. Certainly, in a math book, I can't imagine what he's talking about. You can't imagine what could be in a math book. Wait a minute. Do you remember the story from December 8th of 2021 that was on the Washington Post? Racism is our curriculum. In our curriculum isn't limited to history. It's math too. That he's talking about the fact that American teaching kids math is racist. No, you don't think so? How about this story from the Atlantic? From the Atlantic which was April 25th, 2017, 2017, five years ago. And what is it? How does race affect a student's math education? A new paper examines the ways whiteness reproduces radical, or excuse me, racial advantages and disadvantages. They're telling you, and what's one of the headlines? Whiteness is impacting how and where we see mathematical ability. Two plus two equals four, period. Two plus two equals four. According to 
Vanderbilt Peabody, uh, Vanderbilt University's Peabody College of Education, according to what we're seeing from the Washington Post, no, two plus two equals racism. And this teacher can't see it, doesn't know that it exists, says, that's just a lie. It's not true. They're not doing that. They've been telling us about this for five years. Five years. And this is, the Atlantic is a left-leaning organization. They are promoting this. They are telling you it's a good thing to have racism in a math class, to teach kids that white people are evil and black kids are victims. That's what they want to teach kids in math class. And when the state of Florida saw that in math books, they said, no, kids that are five to 10 years old don't need that. They need to learn two plus two equals four, not racism. What a crazy, insane idea. How could they possibly do that? Look at this. This is Rep. Representative Carlos G. Smith, who says, DeSantis has turned our classrooms into political battlefields. I'm sorry, Carl, Mr. Smith. It already was a battlefield five years ago. And I am sure that if I spent more time researching, I would have found even older stories because I remember there being older stories. No. He didn't turn it into a battlefield. He just decided to fight. The battlefield has already been there. And the battlefield is churning out kids like Quentin Merritt. And they're churning out people like Alexandra Hunt. Individuals with no moral standing that believe that anything they do is perfectly fine. That they have no need to abide by any kind of rules or regulations that they can be as corrupt as hell because they were taught that critical race theory, common core math. It doesn't matter how you get to the answer. It doesn't even matter if the answer is right. Are you black? Then it's okay. It doesn't matter. Are you wrong? Doesn't matter. You're black. It's okay. You're Hispanic. It's okay. You're a woman. It's okay. Doesn't matter how your math went, doesn't matter what your thinking is, doesn't matter if you get the right answer or not, you're black, you're Hispanic, you're a woman, therefore it's all perfectly fine. Let them go. They pass with top grades. This is the world that we are walking into. This is the world that progressives want to turn our nation into. And again, these are progressives who are pushing this. These are Democrats on the, and progressives a splinter of the Democratic Party, and they are running rampant all over our nation trying to twist up your kids and destroy their lives before they even start. So I'm not surprised that Alexandra Hunt is such a failure. I'm not surprised that Quentin Merritt is such a failure when we are seeing examples that Five-year-olds are being taught critical race theory. They are being taught racism. They are being taught to be racist at five years of age because the left thinks that's a good idea. Are we surprised that they are turning out to be screwed up young adults? And if you think I'm wrong, if you think I misunderstand, if you think that the sources are incorrect, that they're not left-leaning enough, which I don't know how I can find anything more left-leaning than I've found already. If you think I've got it wrong, I will respectfully listen and hear your argument. I want to hear I am wrong. I pray that I am wrong. I would love to hear someone prove to me that this is not, that they are not destroying our nation. I would, I'm praying that someone can show me how this will make America better and stronger because I want our nation to be better and stronger. But I cannot see how teaching kids two plus two equals racism is going to make America better or stronger. I don't see how telling kids that yes, pornography is a perfect way to become a politician. I do not see that. I do not see that having a positive outcome. I do not see that working out well. I just don't see it.
And I promise I will not beat up on someone because they say, Mike, I disagree. If you disagree, tell me why. Don't tell me that I'm old. Don't tell me that I'm ugly. Don't tell me I'm a white supremacist or I'm a misogynist. I don't care about any of that. Don't tell me about how you feel. I don't care. Tell me why I am factually incorrect in the conclusion that I am making. I am looking at the facts that are before us. I'm looking at the conclusions, the, the, the results of these facts, and I am making a conclusion based on that. Tell me how I am misunderstanding. When you teach kids, at, when you are teaching kids at five, six, seven, all the way up to 10 years of age, that being white is evil and being black is victimhood, then you wind up with people like Quentin Merritt who thinks that he can do anything because he's black and he's gay, and you wind up with people who, like a man, uh, excuse me, Alexandra Hunt, who thinks that it's perfectly fine to be selling pornography to be able to get a political office and, and be responsible for an area where a third of all the people in Philadelphia die. I just do not see that. If, if I'm misunderstanding this, if anyone is coming to a different conclusion Please tell me. I've shown you the evidence. If you've got a different conclusion on this, if you see how this is a good thing, please call in 607-242-1582. Let me know. If you're watching this after the show, write something in the comments. Tell me how I'm misunderstanding it. If you're on YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, type it in. Tell me how I'm misunderstanding this. I, I really want to understand how am I, how am I getting this wrong? Because progressives think this is the, that I'm wrong. The progressives, if you agree with me, even a little bit, the progressives tell you that you are wrong. They want you to believe that you do not understand this, that you have misunderstood the facts as they exist. And their reason why you don't understand, well, Alexandra is a woman. Presumably a woman. Again, I'm not a biologist, so I can't be sure, but she presents herself as a woman. I think she's a woman. So Alexandra's a woman, and Quentin is a gay black man. So that means I cannot criticize them because women and black and gay. Guess what? I'm a black Hispanic. I'm in those categories too, so deal with it. Of course, I'm. Also Republican, so that eliminates the blackness and the Hispanic nature of my life somehow. I don't understand. Ask a progressive, they can explain it to you. Mike Bowie says, All this, dis uh, he says, all this dissension on the left is anti family, anti God. It's anti America, it's anti democracy. I do not see this as being a benefit to anyone. I do not see that making America stronger. And we know from the progressive movement, they have stated themselves clearly. If you listen to BLM, Patrice Colors, if you listen to Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez or Cori Bush or Anna Presley, Ilan Omar, they have said it directly. They want to change America. They want to change the Constitution. They want to make America a socialist nation. They want to break our way of life and put in their way of life because they like their way of life, not ours. That's the truth. That's being honest. And I'm not trying to make it up. I'm just trying to show it to you. The news media doesn't want you to talk about it. But if you want to know what's the fastest way to be able to get a politician, just like Lieutenant, Lieutenant Governor Benjamin, the former Lieutenant Governor, who is indicted, if you want to have someone just like Andrew Cuomo, who's finally, who was indicted but let off, but committed all these crimes, if you want to have corrupt politicians, hey, the fastest way to do that is to start getting in people like Alexandra Hunt and to let Quentin Merrick start taking positions of power. That's the fastest way. And you do that by teaching six-year-olds that race, that math is racist. And they've been doing it for five years. For five years. They've been doing this. Am I wrong? 
If I'm wrong, tell me I'm wrong. I'm perfectly, I'm a human being. I don't get everything right. If I'm wrong, tell me that I'm wrong. I don't see it. I don't see it. And, it's, and you can even tell me, well, Mike, they may not be good examples of the progressive movement. They may not be good examples of the pinnacle of what progressivism can do, what socialism can do for America. Okay. Fine. So let's take another example. How about defunding the police? That's a progressive idea. That was meant to promote socialism. It's part of the critical race theory, gender identity politics. Let's go with that. Remember, the residents of Portland, Portland, which is in Oregon, super left leaning. Hang on. Hi, uh, this is Michael with. No sound bites allowed, your host. Uh, give me one second before we start. I just want to finish this one sentence, okay? Okay. Okay. So the residents of Portland is a left-leaning city, and their point of view is rejecting the progressive ideology, which I'm going to come back to. But we have uh, a member of the audience who's called in. I thank you for calling in. May I ask, what is your first name? I'd tell you, but I think you already know. It's me, Michael Lee. Hey, Lee. No, I know exactly who it is, but, you know, the audience don't. So what's, what's going on, Lee? You know what I've come to realize about progressives, Michael, and our political situation? That you can say on the show? <laughs> I promise I'll try to keep it PG-rated. Okay. Mostly PG. Um, mostly. Mostly. But... There was a movie made several years, probably 20 years ago, called Weapons of Mass Distraction. Hmm. Okay, I don't know that one. And basically, it's... In a way, progressives are just waging a political insurgency. Because rather than dealing with real issues... that never mind that schools have been failing poor kids for generations, that depending on what your zip code is you live in depends on the education you get. Yeah. Which we can both agree on. Yeah, that's true. You know, progressives keep everybody so tied up and fit with all this minor inconsequential manure that they come up with because all they want to do is perpetuate a state of victimhood for those that follow them that you know you need us to take care of you because you can't do it yourself yes they, uh, and I hate that idea I hate that idea and you know um Try not to let your head explode when I make this comparison. Okay. Because I know you, and but you know, <laughs> it always amazes me when you have someone like Herman Cain, Ben Carson, um, Mr. Sowell, the Economist, Thomas Sowell. Mm -hmm. Thomas. Okay, I couldn't remember his first name. I, but it terrifies the left that people like them, people like you, I mean, we've been friends for 20 years. Yeah. I know a lot about your life and mm -hmm. what you've been through. You know, there's a couple times you could have just rolled over and laid down and said, okay, give me a handout, take care of me. Yeah, one or a few times. Yeah. I mean, we've all been there at some point. It has. And I'm not saying I know for, I know you know that I'm not saying that because you're black that was why. No. I mean, you know what I went through after I came home from Iraq. I could have yeah. just laid down and taken it all and while I fought with the VA and disability. But. They can't stand the idea 
that people won't be dependent on them and that they won't have the control over them. Because it's hilarious the way that, like, they portray the military. Oh, the military is socialism. <laughs> no, the military is not socialism. <laughs> not even close. It's not a democracy by any means, because you can't have a military democracy. No, no. That's kind of like an intelligent politician. It's an oxymoron. <laughs> Very much so. Very much so. You know. Yes, the military takes care of you in every way, in a sense, like what socialism would be. But at the same time, it's a unique situation where the military requires your dedication 24-7. And you are on duty 24-7. Right. You know, they talk about $15 an hour. Now... I have a child who's in the military right now. Yes. With more than two years of service, having served in Iraq himself, he makes $2,407 a month. Now, I did some calculations, and, you know, because you are on duty 24-7, mm -hmm. I know you can remember the days where they came through the barracks and said, you know, it might have been 10 o'clock at night and said, hey, we got a job to do. Get your gear and load up and we're going to go do it. I was on radio duty for three days and eight hours in a row. Exactly. Three, three days and eight hours. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah. And, you know, when you consider like... I know my personal record for Iraq was 68 hours on one mission. I think. That's when, that's, when you get to that point, that's when the things are jumping out of the shadows in the middle of the noonday sun. Just, just, it's crazy. Yeah. Yeah, that's not, that's you know, not good. But the thing of it was, for that 68 hours, that we'll say minimum wage then was 725. Was I really making seven twenty five an hour for that sixty eight hours I worked? No, <laughs> no. If I was lucky, it was about three dollars an hour. And there is no such thing as overtime. And yeah, if you put in a bill for overtime, <laughs> I mean, it just reminds me of that old Mash episode when Radar did the paperwork for Hawkeye for how much money he'd lost while he was in Korea. It's just ridiculous, yeah. Yeah. But, you know, so that these guys, they want to tie everybody up in fits and knots and about all these things because, like, schools especially. Mm-hmm. Until the last 10 years, what has always been the teachers' union's positions about parental involvement? They were mostly okay, as long as the parents were agreeing with them. Well, is you remember their mantra for the longest time, you know, it's not our job to teach kids right and wrong. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That that's the parent's job and all this other stuff. Yeah. And now it's, no, we'll raise your kids for you because you're too stupid to do it and aren't going to teach them right. And they can't understand the fact that, like the LGBT agenda stuff. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm not going to go into details, but I've been involved in alternative lifestyles throughout my adulthood. Fair enough. Um, you know, I used to have many friends in the LGBT community. Mm -hmm. But, you know, it was always... There was always... And 
I still follow that stuff kind of just to see where it goes. But, you know, it used to be that it didn't matter what your politics were. Is That was something else. That was another part of your life that politics didn't become involved for the most part. You know, people right. said, this, this is my private life. It's nobody else's business. Mm-hmm. And, you know. No one would ask you, who did you vote for and why did you vote this way? It was, no one would ask. No one would even ask. Yeah, you were just people. Mm-hmm. Nobody cared who you were having sex with, what you wanted to wear. I mean... I'm sure in your travels throughout time that you've come across people that, I mean... Have radically different ideas than me about a lot yeah. of things, which is fine. I'm okay with that. You know, they're not trying yeah. to beat me over the head with it. It's like, okay, that's your life. Go for it. But it was like I explained to a friend. Actually, it wasn't a friend. It was a professor of mine years ago at Corning Community College. Mm-hmm about gays serving in the military. Now, you were, you're a veteran. You served in the military before Don't Ask, Don't Tell. Yeah. Now, and you can verify this for me. The Army didn't, the military never cared who you slept with, really. They didn't want the only know. thing... The only thing the military cared about if, as far as your sex life was if you got a girl pregnant, that you stepped up and took responsibility. Mm-hmm. And other than that, if your sex life came to the military's attention, you were in trouble whether you were straight gay, you wanted to have sex with trees or bullfrogs or whatever the hell you wanted to. Yes. No it way. was the fact that your sex life was your business and you didn't want it to become theirs. Right. You don't get caught. It doesn't matter who you're doing, don't, don't get caught doing it. Right. Because, like, you can also verify the Uniform Code of Military Justice. Mm-hmm. You know, what gays in the military were charged under was sodomy. Yes. Which, you know, the military considers anything not missionary-style sex to be sodomy. Right. No matter what Was the definition. Right. And, you know, that professor told me, oh, yeah, but see, that's picking on, that was picking on soldiers who might be gay. And I said, oh, really? Because, you know, the one time I had a prisoner detail filling sandbags for me. One of the young soldiers, I'll call him a young soldier, even though he was a prisoner, because I didn't agree with his sentence. He received three years for sodomy. When his unit called an alert on a Saturday night one time, his squad leader knew he was in his room and opened his barracks room door. The young man was performing oral sex on the young lady that he was seeing. Not missionary, he's in trouble. And exactly. He was a perfectly heterosexual young man that chose an alternative form of sex and his squad leader pushed the issue because he was a Bible. He was deeply religious and filed charges. Of course, the letter of the law well, says you're guilty. Well, you committed a crime according to the rules that you enlisted and agreed to abide by. Well, that's the thing, Lee. A lot of the civilians, a lot of these progressives, they have never been in the military, nor would they ever go into the military. So they have never investigated. They have no idea what the UMC, UCMJ says. They have no idea how it's enforced. They have no idea what it is to live under that kind of structure. 
They make it up in their heads and they say, well, it's like this because I saw a movie. It's like the guy in the movie, the, the guys writing the movies don't know either. Yeah. And that's the funniest part of it because they pick and choose the part of the law that they want to see, but they don't bother to look at the totality of circumstances that, you know, okay, yeah, if you're gay and the military finds out about it under the old way, you know, even with don't ask, don't tell if soldiers were found out to be gay or they were discharged because the military considered it that they were going, if they were actively involved in the gay lifestyle, they were going to engage in sodomy. So that without Congress changing the rules, you know, don't ask, don't tell. Okay, now you told. Now we got to do something because you brought it to our attention. Yeah. Well, you know, I think a lot of people don't understand the reason why the military is the way it is. First of all, that the Constitution does not apply to anyone. If you are in the military, the Constitution no longer applies to you. You voluntarily waive all constitutional rights. Two, that the military is like it is because you don't, no one democratically says, hey, Let's vote and see who's going to run up at that machine gun nest and take it out. No one in their right mind would do that. You, you don't do that because I just feel like taking on that machine gunner. I feel like taking on that sniper that I want to run around trying to check for IEDs. No one in their right mind does that. You do it because you're ordered to do it, and that's the structure. And that structure has to be absolutely rigid. Because if you give people choices, they're not doing that stuff. Now, wait a minute. I got to pick a fight on you about the IED stuff. Because I do know I some know. people that aren't mentally stable and did go out looking for them just, well, I mean, I did it for my fellow soldiers and I civilians know. that, you know. Yes, but uh, let me but be, yeah, it's yeah. not anybody's idea of a good time. It's not you get off work on Friday night and tell the guys, "Hey, let's go looking for roadside bombs." Exactly. That's that's my point. That that's perhaps I'm being a little bombastic about it, but it, yeah, that's my point. It, there's a reason why the military has done the way it's done, and they and they don't misunderstand that, and they misrepresent us, and it's the same. But it all comes from, I think. When you start off telling kids, and you've had kids, so when you start telling kids that people of a certain color are evil and people of another color are victims, that some people are less than other people because of a political ideology, because they want to get a vote, that that goes through their life, and it doesn't work out well, that that kid will not turn out well-adjusted. And they're going to do things, like some of the people I've been highlighting today, that are criminal in some cases, and, and really destructive in others. I mean, do you agree? Yeah, because, I mean, as you know, I have kids. I mean, I have three sons that are adults, and I have two that are toddlers. And I have a daughter that she's my youngest. Otherwise, I have four boys. But, you know, one of the most eye-opening things for me was some of the women that I have served with in the military or female veterans I know. Because... I got to do some crazy stuff while I was in Iraq, but I know some women that one female veteran I know her entire tour in Iraq was was going on house raids with the Rangers in Baghdad. You know, it wasn't that she was literally a part of the raid team to help secure women and children because, of course... You know, we'd have ignited the whole Middle East if men started patting down women for weapons or anything. And their cultural 
Moors. And so that, I mean, that was what this woman's job was. I mean, we had female medics that went out on combat missions with us. And these guys, oh, women are, it's like, no. Eh. Sorry. Women are a hell of a lot tougher than most men give them credit for. And most women, even. That, you know, there's things you and I can't do that a woman can, and that I would never want to experience. Childbirth being one. Right. And, you know, it amazes me just how much the war on terror has changed, in a way, the definition of what a strong woman is. They've completely ruined the message of what a strong woman is or could be. I, I think every mother is a strong woman because it's hard and it takes strong people to raise children. I, I think that's incredibly powerful. And, you know, the same thing. I mean, maybe that's where... Gen X is different from these younger, from the millennials and stuff. That, you know, for us growing up, if we had a problem, you took care of it. You know, did you have any friends when you were in school, say primary school, that you had a friend that, you and him might have had blowouts every day of the week, beat the living hell out of each other after school, and next morning you were walking to school together and best friends. A couple of my very good friends started off as someone I had a fight with. Exactly. And, you know, for us, it was a matter of we treated people You know, the old saying, talk shit, get hit, is, I think it's one of the things that, like the zero tolerance policies, has created this victimhood. Because everybody wants somebody else to fight their battles, and nobody's willing to step up and fight their own. I mean... I've known quite a few people that were gay or transgender or cross-dressers that I wouldn't have gotten in a fight with them. Well, I, I think... Because mm -hmm. I... Not that I had any... I could care less what they did in their personal life, but for the fact that I knew... them not their outside but I had taken the time I knew them and knew that hey okay that's their thing they're happy it's, it's not my job to judge them or anything is I can be friends with them and you know right people and other people, oh, well, you were in the military, you must have picked on gays. It's like, no. Is, you know, I'd like to think I've always treated people as much the way I wanted them to treat me as I treated them. And this victim mentality that they're trying to propagate You know, like the transgender arguments about bathrooms. Louding can And mm -hmm. I'm not, you know, you and I, I'm sure at some point you've come across someone that might have been transgender or whatever that 
you know. More than a couple, yeah. If they walked into the women's bathroom, unless they walked in there and went, where's the goddamn urinals in this place? You didn't know, you wouldn't have known they were a woman. No one cared. Yeah. (laughs) No one cared. (laughs) And it's kind of scary to me, these people that have to... I'm going to dress up and pretend, and you have to accept it. And what they really don't realize is most people don't care. Most people, if you leave people alone, they don't care. If you're not causing a problem, they don't care. There have been, uh, and, and in my experience, every transgender person I know isn't looking to go marching down the middle of the street demanding that people treat them a certain way. They just want to live and want to be treated with respect. And yeah. when they do that, when they just live, they get treated with respect and no one asks a single question. But when someone's screaming down the street saying, you've got to do this for me, whether they're black or they're gay or they're trans, woman or man, when they're demanding that I have to change my life and I have to do what they say because they have a feeling, that's when we have a problem. Yeah, and that's exactly it. I mean, I can remember one time back in the 90s while I was on active duty in the military. We had a battalion field day picnic thing. You know the ones you used to have every summer where you had to show up and play stupid games and everybody's families were there and the single guys were going, please, God, don't make me do this. (laughs) Yeah, I remember. And, you know, a couple days before it, we were... I want to say it was like a LARP festival or something that we'd gone to check out, and they had kilts. And one of my buddies said, hey, I dare you to buy a kilt and wear it to the battalion field days. (laughs) You know, my company commander walked up, and the next day I had to go to the um, sea site because he was determined I was a cross-dresser. It's like it's a kilt. So you're telling me a whole bunch of Scottish guys. And, you know, I mean, I did it as a joke, but you know me. I, you know, I'll, I really could care less. If I do something that offends you, I may apologize if I do it inadvertently. Because I realize that words can be hurtful at times and... As we both know, I have an ability to say the wrong thing at the wrong time. A little bit. But at the same time, I don't ever deliberately set out to offend people. Or, well, I might set out to offend people with things that I say or do. But I don't do it on a personal level. That, you know, I may wear a t-shirt or something that you might not agree with the, with the statement on it. And find it to be offensive. At the same time, you know, yeah. if that's my thinking or that's how I feel, well, too bad for you. I'm, I have my right to free speech and stuff. And, you know, I sacrificed it for years. Because, as you said, you know, you give up most of your rights when you join the military. Oh, yeah. With a quickness. And, you know, it's... I can't even believe the culture that has taken over that we have a general that is talking about his white rage, reading up on his white rage when, and making sure that 
future military leaders understand it, rather than, you know, the simple fact, they're the military. Their primary job is to blow shit up and kill people when needed. It may be to do humanitarian missions and help out when at other times, but the primary purpose of being a soldier, sailor, airman is to go in harm's way so that other people don't have to. Yes. And, you know, these... I just... I don't understand it with these people that, you know, with the world situation right now, that general that I mentioned should be screaming at Congress going, I need more money for more bullets, more hand grenades, more everything, so that if I have to send these young men and women into combat, they're the baddest SOBs and um, yeah. I guess to be politically correct, I'll say Bs too. <laughs> Don't want to leave anybody out. Right. But, you know, that's what, his jo- that's what the job should be for the military. Not worrying about white rage. Uh, I mean... He's all, uh, that General Milley is who we're speaking about, and he's already, in my book, he's committed treason when he called up China and gave them secrets and, and, and shared inf- info with them that he's not supposed to give them. And, and I don't think he's got the best interest of America in his heart. Um, I, he may think he does, but I don't know how he can justify that. Based The on only the- thing General Milley has in his heart in, as far as best interests is his. Yeah. Is he is a political general. Which is the worst kind of general you can have. And, you know, just like the Secretary of Defense, I mean, he's on the board of Raytheon, and all the stuff we're sending to Ukraine, like Javelin missiles, $130,000 every time we send one of those missiles to Ukraine is going partially into his pocket. Now, see, to me, that's a conflict of interest. Should be. Is, you know, and I know everybody says we need to be involved in Ukraine. No, we don't. No, we don't. And, no, we don't, because for the last 10 years, we've heard nothing from the mainstream media but how corrupt they are and everything else. And now, all of a sudden, they're the good guys. Well, people are talking about the Azov Battalion and the fact that they're neo-Nazis, but they're the good guys. I I will say... No, that's not the way it works, guys. No, I'm not saying they're good guys, but I am saying Russia's a bigger bad guy, but but they're not good guys either. So, to me, that means leave them alone. Let's stay out of it. It's They didn't cross... They haven't gone into a NATO nation. I don't care. Yeah, and I'm sorry, the Ukraine doesn't touch the Atlantic, so we don't, they don't need to be a member of, I mean, it no, I is don't. all a bunch of silliness no. so that politicians can stand there and wave their peckers at people and say, look, I've got the biggest schlong in town. Well, it's part of that, they're doing something. Which is one of the worst things I ever hear from politicians. I'm doing something. Yeah, but are you doing the right thing? Big difference. Big difference. Well, it's like, you know, the announcement this week, they're going to use VA doctors to treat illegals at the border. I heard that. How, how stupid was I to serve 16 years when I could have just jumped the fence and said, hey, I'm Paco Rodriguez. I want to see a doctor. Yeah, no. I know. I, I, well, I'm about to go into that, but let me, let me do this, because I know this, we've covered a lot of ground. 
and I'm sure it's the few things people want to talk about about this. Um, but let me ask you, is there a, a final thought you want to bring up? You know, the only final thought I have, Michael, is people that aren't progressives, we need to start standing up to them and telling them, never mind this phony bullshit you're coming up with about math is racist or all this other stuff. You know. Mm -hmm. Let's concentrate on the real issues to give these kids a better life coming up. Instead of dumbing them down and telling them that, no, you need us to take care of you because you can't do it yourself. Yeah, let's, let's go the other way. The other way has worked a lot better for a lot longer. Yeah. And... I mean, hey, we know. America's made mistakes through the years. There's been a shit ton of them. Name a nation that hasn't. But you know what? Learn from the mistakes. I mean, hell, the Democrats learned from the Jim Crow laws that they had to... I mean, people don't realize that the Jim Crow laws evolved even as they... Democrats realize that, oops, wait a minute, we're keeping white people from voting, too. Yeah. That, you know, like the poll taxes, the literacy tests. That, yeah. Um, the grandfather clause. That, oops, that didn't work out quite the way we thought it was supposed to. Maybe we need to rethink this. And they don't mention that. That, you know... Well, it's not, it's kind of like why they don't talk about, when they're talking about mass shootings or they're talking about gun control, they never tell you any of the data, like every time they've passed a law, it's had zero impact. It hasn't changed anything because criminals don't care. They don't talk about it because it doesn't push the agenda. And that's a problem, which is why I like to talk about it because I don't, <laughs> I don't agree with the agenda. Well, you know, that's, the biggest part of it is nobody ever talks about doing something to make it tougher on the criminals that do these shootings. The actions have consequences. No. Instead, they're, oh, blame it on the gun. I mean, like I said, you've known me for 20 years. Is At times, I have owned guns during that time. And you know, I've never had a gun in my 47 years go and shoot someone that belonged to me. I mean, the only one I ever had to shot anybody was in Iraq. And that was because it was the job it was designed to do and the purpose I needed it for. Right. It, they don't go out and randomly attack people. No. I mean, I sat there for hours one day watching to make sure, because politicians must be right. Guns are scary. Nope. Didn't do nothing. Still ain't done nothing. But, okay, rant over. <laughs> I'll say goodbye, brother, and let you get some other callers All right. and stuff. You take care. Don't do anything I wouldn't do. <laughs> that leaves a lot of room. But hey, I know. I want you to have a good Easter for you and the family, all right? You too, Michael. Take uh, care. Happy uh, Easter. Bye-bye. Happy Easter. So that was one of our callers and uh, a good personal friend as well. And we talked about a lot of the different aspects of what's going on in America right now and how we're seeing that chain going from, from teaching kids in the beginning, you know, at five years of age, about racism to, teaching them to be racist, not about racism, but that they can be, oops, turned off the wrong thing, um, that they should be racist, that white people are evil and black people are victims. That's a problem. And I'm fighting against that, by the way. And I'll, I'll remind everyone that on May 3rd, I'm having a protest, me personally, I'm doing a protest over at uh, SUNY Broom in the Bington area 
and I hope you'll join me to protest the critical race theory that's being taught there that's increasing the net racism in America and in our communities. And I hope you'll join me. Um, I do want to say, hello, Cuba. Cuba, you're over in Poland. You're up. Uh, what? It's pretty much bedtime for you. It's good to see you, Cuba. I'm glad that you're here with us. Is everybody safe? I hope everyone's okay in Poland right now. And thank you for joining us on the program. I always love it when we have people from overseas to join us, especially with the time difference there. So we were talking about a lot of things there with my friend Lee. And of course, you can call in at 607-242-1582. You can tell us if you agree or disagree with anything that you're hearing, or if there's something else that you think is important that needs to be talked about. Like the fact that the Biden administration wants to take our veteran, our, our VA doctors, and give them to illegal immigrants, people who've broken the United States law, not the people who have been injured and suffered because America asked them to do something. No, no. He wants to give it to people who are breaking our laws to come into America. And when we say they're breaking our laws, we're talking about people coming into this nation in the hundreds of thousands. In fact, it's over 200,000. I have this. I have it here. Where is it? Over 221,000 people came into the United States just in the month of March. That's ridiculous. That is a two-decade high. That's an incredibly large number that they are coming into the United States to break our laws and to, and to ask us for money and to take care of their kids. And besides the fact that, as I have always said, that's just criminal. That's child abuse. But now we're adding to that. Not only are we encouraging them to send children by themselves on thousand mile treks with sex slavers and drug gangs to be left in the middle of a desert, hopefully being found by our border patrol, a border patrol that we're sending over to Poland instead of taking care of our southern border. But now we're going to send our doctors who are supposed to be taking care of our vets who are overworked and they are understaffed and taking care of the veterans in the United States. And instead of actually taking care of our veterans who have given the most of any American to protect America and our way of living, and we're going to give those doctors and we're going to give them to illegal aliens. Why? Why in the world would we do that? What justifies us doing that? What is the purpose and reason for doing that? It doesn't make any sense to me. And I cannot understand why in the world we would ever consider doing something as dumb as that. Here it is. I mean, just look at the news and, and then look at the way the news is being said about the, the migrants here. Reuters is telling you it's 210,000, right? It's a 22-year high, according to ABC News. Uh, we see Fox News says 221,000. Okay, wait a minute. Daily Mail, 221,303 illegal aliens. And don't tell me that they're undocumented. The documents they miss are any authorization to be in the United States. And everyone in the world is seeing this. Everyone in the world is talking about this. And that's encouraging people to come. They're seeing that the border is wide open. The door is open. There is no gate that they can just walk into America and have a, a better life, which is nice, except we didn't invite them here. We didn't ask them to come here. And it's not in our best interest. That's why we've had four busloads, four busloads of illegal aliens. Governor uh, Greg Abbott of Texas has sent them over to D.C. How many more does he have to send before Washington, D.C. suddenly says, hey, there's a problem that they can't handle it? Because we can't handle 221,000 people per month coming into our southern border. We can't handle that. We can't, and we should never be taking our veterans, our, our, our doctors for our veterans, and giving them and handing them over to illegal aliens. I'm sorry. No, I'm actually, I'm not sorry. 
No, you don't get that right. You don't deserve that. You don't deserve our doctors that are supposed to be taking care of our veterans. And it's not like we have enough doctors in the nation anyway. We've already had a shortage since 19, uh, 2019. We were short 1.8 million doctors in this nation. So it's not like we have extra to spare. For every doctor that we're taking away, there's veterans who are suffering because of that. And this is what the left thinks is a good idea. The left thinks it's perfectly fine to take care, to, to take our veterans who have given so much and to take away their health care. No wonder under the Obama administration we had so many problems. Do you remember the Obama administration? Do you remember the VA scandal? Do you remember the fact that veterans were dying because they couldn't get to a doctor? They had that many months of a wait. And now we see the Biden administration is going right back to that same, same system, that same idea, and delaying potentially by weeks, if not by months, the, the treatment of our veterans to take care of illegal aliens, people who are criminals and have broken our law. And let's remember, they are illegal aliens. They are criminals. They have broken the law coming into the United States without permission. And they are abusing children in the process, sending them on thousand mile treks. If you sent your kid down the block and you didn't have proper supervision, it's the same liberals, the same liberal ideology that would try and take your kid away from you with CPS, Child Protective Services, across this country. Those same people would take, you, take your kid away because he scraped his knee and they would investigate you for child abuse because your kid was playing outside. And those same people are taking our doctors from our veterans and giving them to illegal aliens so that more kids are encouraged to come on a thousand mile trek into the United States alone with sex slaves and gangs, drug gangs surrounding them. Does that make any sense to anyone? Tell me how they are not failing us. And I'm talking about the Biden-Harris administration. I'm talking about the progressive socialist movement. How are they not failing America? Let me get to some of the comments. Kuba's had a comment here, and he's over in Poland. And he says, well, I do not participate in Easter holidays because of his beliefs, but Poles seem to unite with Ukrainians even more in the first days of, of the war. Okay. Uh, he also goes on to say, Kuba says, by the way, what's interesting is Ukrainians are, protest, are Protestants mainly, but they don't hesitate to participate in our holidays as far as he knows. I didn't know that they were mostly Protestant. Well, that's interesting to know. Dow mentions that they could always send those doctors and medical staff to cover the illegals. It's not like the New York government needs a medical apparatus. New York State is just as bad. They fired 34,000 doctors because the doctors decided to follow the Hippocratic Oath and not appointed Governor Kathy Hochul's demands. And because of that, she punished them by firing them, which put New York State into worse of a situation than we had already been in. We have, that's why there are delays for people right now. And remember, she wanted to use the National Guard and use the very same doctor she fired to be able to take care of the, of the, the vacancy the vacuum of doctors and nurses that she created. This is what we get with progressives. This is what we get with a progressive system. This is in New York. This is happening and affecting us in Texas. This is happening in California, Illinois. This is what they're doing to our children in North Carolina. This is what's happening in Pennsylvania. Oh, and Cuba says, no, they're Orthodox Church. Hey, user has been banned is back. It's good to see you. North Korea border policy would fix the problem. He says fentanyl should be classified as a chemical weapon since, Dutch, since just touching it can kill. We should give Mexico and South America an ultimatum to fix their, um, their stuff or we will come in and take their land and make new states. Well, that is the manifest destiny ideology. It was an idea for a long time in America that America would take over Mexico and make it part of the United States, which would improve that nation dramatically. 
But I don't know that we want Mexico. Mexico's a messed up country with a lot of talk about corruption. I mean, at least they're honest about the corruption that they have. But do we really want to take that over? Do we really want their problem? What we need is a border that's shut down, which helps us with the fentanyl, which is leading to overdose deaths at record numbers, and the drugs that come across our border at record numbers. I understand that people like uh, Alexandra Hunt, in between doing her modeling for OnlyFans, that she wants to make sure that people have harm reduction. You know what's the best harm reduction you can do? Don't let the drugs into the nation. There's your harm reduction. If you can't get the drugs, you can't be addicted to the drugs, that you have to be forced to quit the drugs. There's a harm reduction. Let's try that for a while. I think that might help a little bit. I think it may reduce the problem just a bit. Let's do that for an idea. Maybe I don't understand. I, I think I understand it pretty well, though. When we're sending our border guards to other countries and leaving our border even more open, when we're sending doctors down and telling people, hey, if you make it to the United States, we're going to have doctors take care of all of your problems. And we're going to let 80,000 of 221,000 people right into America immediately. And we'll probably let the rest in in a little bit of a delay. When we do these things, that's not telling the world that America's secure. It's not telling the world that America is doing a good job. It's saying that we're willing to be abused, that we're abusing ourselves and destroying ourselves. And if you think I have misunderstood that, if you think I am wrong on that, please, 607-242-1582, explain to me how it is a good thing to have over 221,000 illegal aliens entering our nation every month. Something that we've been talking about and warning you since December. We told you that there were migrant caravans coming to the border. We told you that they were coming in in waves. We told you that there were huge numbers since December of 2021. The Biden-Harris administration cannot lie to the American people and say to your face they had no idea they were coming. We have seen for months that the caravans were on the way. We have had the projections from the Border Patrol for months telling us that they were going to be significant increases, that this was going to be overwhelming to the system. We knew this for months. For, and where is Kamala Harris? When, where is her being the, foreign, the czar, the southern border czar? Where is her concern and her action there? What is happening here? We're so busy trying to teach our kids that they can assume whatever authority they want to, to proclaim that they are somehow great when they're not, when they're being malicious and when they are lying. And we're telling them that it's perfectly fine to throw away morality and to be corrupt in their political goals. We're so busy telling them this. We're so busy telling them that math is racist that we're not paying attention to what's happening to our country, which is it's being destroyed. How about, I was talking before about Portland. The people of Portland have looked at this, and they, Portland is as liberal a city as you can get, maybe second only to Seattle. This is one of the most liberal, progressive cities in the nation. And what are they saying? They say, they're saying they want more police. That defunding the police, the very same thing that they had asked for in June 2020, the Portland City Council and the mayor cut $15 million from the police budget, then cut another $12 million on the police budget. And today, they have increased the budget by 5.4. They replaced the of the $27 million that they took away. They're trying to hire up to 200 police officers because crime is running rampant, because the progressive idea didn't work, and the people are begging for what they had before. And guess what? They're not getting it. That's the problem with the progressive socialist ideology. You don't get it back. You don't get to go back to the freedom you had before. You don't get to go back to the safety you had before because you destroyed the system that provided that to you. And that is a problem. And we should talk about that. And the news media is hiding that from you. 
Did you know that Portland and Seattle and New York City and almost every single one of the 22 cities that defunded the police, that fired police officers and left the public defenseless, that they have rehired, that they've been giving back the money, that they're trying to get the police back and they can't, that the police don't want to work where they're going to be attacked by their bosses as well as criminals. I mean, these are things that you're not hearing in the news media, but you should, because I know that sometimes it's on the conservative side, more right-leaning news media programs like this are telling people about it. But what about the left? They're the people who are being affected just as much, and in many cases, even more. Why is the news media hiding this from us? Because it's about an election. Because if they told you the truth, and if they paid attention to what's happening, you wouldn't vote for them. And they would lose power. And that's what this is ultimately all about. It's about their power, not helping you. If it was about helping you, then you wouldn't be hearing that the biggest problem that Kathy Hochul has right now is trying to figure out who's going to take over for the criminal that she, tur- that she turned into the lieutenant governor or accused criminal, the suspected criminal. In fact, in there it says, I think the public would support that. No one wants a candidate on the ballot who's not a candidate. It's kind of an insult to voters to leave a candidate on the ballot. She's worried about the ballot. She's worried about how it looks. She's worried about how many votes she might lose because Brian Benjamin is indicted for bribery. That he is, well, excuse me, not bribery, for uh, campaign finance irregularities. But she's worried about who's on the ballot. And she's, mind you, Democrats in New York already signed the petitions. This is who Democrats wanted. They wanted Brian Benjamin. They wanted Kathy Hochul. And now she's going to replace it with someone else that she picks. Who's she picking? Possibly someone who's a woman or someone, a person of color. But does that mean they're the best person? No. Are they progressives? Yes. She's picking another progressive. And another progressive of color. Possibly a woman. Why? Does that mean they're the best person for the job? Are they going to do their, are they going to vet these people? Are we going to find out in a month after the election that they're just as corrupt as Brian Benjamin, just as corrupt as the other progressives that we are seeing throughout this state, just as corrupt as Andrew Cuomo? Are you going to continue to tell us that, oh, Kathy Holter, she had no way of knowing. There is no way she could possibly have known that this guy was corrupt. There's no way that she could have known that her former boss, Andrew Cuomo, was corrupt. There was only investigation after investigation throughout New York State that was suppressed and hidden by the New York State legislature, which is a single party rule that Democrats have total control of, that they stop every single investigation that starts looking into any corruption as often as they can because it is that widespread. Come on, people. And I wanted to get into this as well. I mean... Where's the news media telling you that John Durham for the FBI, special counsel John Durham, is looking at the CIA and found out that the CIA knew, knew for a fact, the FBI knew for a fact that you were lied to for years, years. Quote, for example, while the FBI did not reach the ultimate conclusion regarding the data's accuracy, this is the... uh, um, Steele report that said that Trump colluded with Russia, that the data's accuracy, regarding data's accuracy, or whether it might have been in whole or in part genuine, spoofed, altered, or fabricated, the CIA concluded in early 2017, almost immediately as soon as this came up, the CIA in 2017, that um, the Russian bank data and Russian phone provider data was not technically plausible. This didn't make any sense. Did not withstand technical scrutiny. When you looked at it, it was false. It was obviously fake. Contained gaps. It did not continue. It was not logical and conflicted with itself. It could not even maintain a consistent lie and was user-created 
not machine tool generated. They made this by hand. They made this up. You have been lied to. But yet the news media doesn't want to cover this because, well, then you wouldn't vote for Democrats. So they have to suppress this, just like they suppressed the laptop for Hunter Biden. What's going on here, folks? And they're doing this because kids are being taught from the very beginning that, well, you know, this is a biased country and it's being right. If you're on the right, you're biased. If you're white, you're biased. That they're the only ones who know and they have to protect you by telling you that math is racist. That they have to try and indoctrinate kids from five, from the age of five years old and up. That the entire system is built around an indoctrination that will allow these people to be corrupt and to lie to your face and win elections. That's what they're looking to do. Even as our border is being hijacked, our nation's falling apart around us. And I haven't even talked about inflation. I haven't even talked about inflation yet. Kuba says, even that, um, even that I'm not into internal American politics, I like hearing you and considering your point of view. Well, that's all I'm asking people to do. And again, people are more than happy to say, Mike, you've missed the data. There's something wrong in the evidence that you're providing. I don't agree with the conclusion you make off of that. That's fine. And that's why you can call on to 607-242-1582. Kuba is getting in touch with us from Poland. I know there's people across the United States that are watching this. And if you disagree, you can type in. You can make your voice heard as well. But I can tell you that this is leading to a problem. How bad this is, and this is bad for the rest of the world. Because if America is screwed up, if America can't handle its own problems, if America is degrading, then that's in, as in with our inflation, which is affecting the rest of the world. And we have our wars that are inflaming right now. We see that North Korea is making nuclear missiles. Iran wants to make nuclear missiles. We have China threatening to take over Taiwan. We have the North Korea trying to throw missiles at Japan and threatening South Korea. We have what's happening with Russia and Ukraine. These are problems because America is weak and falling apart. It's not just one thing, it's many things. The system is falling apart when we have progressives introducing socialism and trying to tear it apart, which is what they want to do. And we have ingrained our children to believe, um, to believe this. Kuberman asks, what is the official inflation rate in America right now? At this moment, the official inflation rate is 7.9%. It is expected to hit 11% this, uh, in May representing April. And if you go to a store, real world, every single person I have ever asked and has commented on this program and in person have told me that the reality is it's about 22%. If you go to the store, you're buying food, you're buying clothing, you're buying uh, gas, you're paying your electric bill, you're looking at about 22%, in some cases, 40% more than you were paying in December of 2021. Let's not joke here, folks. It's five months ago, you paid 22% less than what you're paying today. And that's because of the progressive politics directly. That's why we have an energy crisis, which is driving up the cost, which is why we're going to have a shortfall and a food shortage, as stated by the White House. And they're getting away with this because they have programmed our kids so badly. Let me show you the evidence. There was a teacher at Binghamton University. A teacher in Binghamton University decided that she was going to use progressive stacking where less privileged students, where women and people of color would get priority to speak during classrooms, but those with more privilege, white students or men, did not get to be able to speak. They were silenced. Now, you got to think. That's a problem. And what did they do? The students at Binghamton University, the students who were being picked based on their race and their gender, which is sexist and racist, 
they decided to support that teacher who was using racism and sexism as part of the class structure that they have been so brainwashed to think that this is the best thing you can do that when someone is blatantly directly and in your face telling you that she is going to use sexism and racism as part of the class curriculum that they're saying oh a hundred of these students came together and said that's great i'm so happy that i have a sexist racist teacher that is teaching in a sexist racist manner you only get to students saying that this is a good thing by starting off and telling kids that math is racist and doing it from five years old all the way through, from kindergarten all the way through college. Again, this is why I am protesting at SUNY Broom to try and stop that chain, to prevent that from continuing to happen because it's insane, because it is that breakdown, that insanity that is leading to a recession and we are going into a recession. There is no question that there's a recession. I mean, it's now official. We're hearing, this is coming from Mark Zandi, who is, uh, who's an analyst, a chief economist for Moody's Analytics, and he mentioned that the recession risks are uncom uncomfortably high and moving higher. Goldman Sachs has said that a recession is 35% likely. In fact, there are uh, other economists who are saying, Deutsche Bank is saying, there is going to be a recession. And if you think that recession is only going to affect America, you have no understanding of economics. You're just like Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez or Andrew Yang, who don't understand what they're talking about. This recession will be global, just like the food shortage is global, just like the increase in the cost of energy is global. And it is a result of the progressive ideology that we have seen affecting our students and our politicians and affecting America. And that's going to hurt. You want to talk about people who are being affected? I hear all these economists, oh, we got to worry about global warming because it's going to destroy third world nations. What do you think a food shortage is going to do? Because there are already riots for food around the world because food is already increasing in price. It is already becoming untenable for many people around the world, and it's going to get worse. That's not speculation. The White House has already told us that. The news media has already released that because it was already obvious we were warning you about that back in January. But let's go uh, back to the comments. User has been banned mentions, ah oh, yes, the progressive stack. I hate my generation, he says. I thought you were a little older, user. Okay. And Cuba mentions in Poland, inflation hit 10% last month. Actually, I think that increased inflation is a global problem nowadays, and there are a lot of factors to be considered. There are a lot of factors. One of the leading factors is the cost of energy, which the United States, in going from a net exporter of energy to be a net importer of energy because of global warming, did not help. That put more pressure and increased the price. And if you think I'm wrong, look at the charts. The price of energy started increasing in the United States February 2021, right after Joe Biden started making changes to America's energy status. And that has increased it. And when you increase the cost of energy, like gasoline, so you're increasing the cost of diesel fuel, that means it costs more for a truck to go and deliver any of the goods. It means that when you have a shipping container of goods going from one country to another, that it increases the cost of that fuel it needs to use. When it means that it costs more to create the electricity that charges up those electric cars and those electric bikes that people go, oh, see, I'm using electric bikes, so I'm not causing pollution. You're a liar. That's not true. It is false. It is demonstrably, emphatically, and empirically incorrect. So we see that increasing it. Then you add in some of the other factors, some of which are coming from Russia, like the fact that there's going to be less fertilizer available, and that's already affecting our crops, and that means there's going to be less food. So food is already more expensive, and now you're going to add this to the fact that there's going to be less of it around the world. 
This is a problem. So that's why inflation is global and why the United States is leading the way to higher prices around the globe. If the United States was a net exporter of energy, if we went back to 2019 and we were exporting energy, we'd be able to help Germany. That would reduce the amount of the cost of Russian oil and gas, and it would help to help, uh, help keep down that price so other countries around the world wouldn't have to pay extra just to get food delivered to a store. So would there still be inflation? Maybe. Would it be as big? No, because we'd be buffering that. We'd actually be adding to the world and helping to keep those prices down. It would be good for America and it would be good for the rest of the world. But instead, we went with the progressive ideology, global warming. Oh, we got to get rid of greenhouse gases with nothing else to replace our energy sources with. Solar doesn't work. Wind doesn't work. That is a fact. It is documented. Who documented it? Michael Moore. Let me go again to the left. Planet of the Humans. He did the documentary. He's as left-leaning as you can get. He's the source I'm quoting. I'm quoting his documentary where he documents and shows you the facts and the figures telling you green energy doesn't work. And this is what we're supposed to switch into that doesn't exist and doesn't work. This is why the cost of energy is going up around the world. And this is a problem. And user mentions that, yes, this is a big thing. Then add in the Russian BS and we are in for a terrible ride. Meanwhile, charging those devices uses more energy. Again, they think, oh, well, I'll just plug it into the wall. The energy just shows up. You got to create it. And that means that you have to use fuel. And you can't use solar. You can't use wind because they're not reliable. They don't work. And so you have to use natural gas because we can't use nuclear because they don't like nuclear. The same progressives that hate oil and gas hate nuclear. So we have to use oil and gas. This is why we're seeing the cost increases. And that's why we've been predicting it for so long, why we've been so far ahead of the rest of the news media, because we are giving you an honest conclusion to the evidence that is in front of us. That's why back in February, we told you that inflation would go to 11 to 15 percent. And here it is. It's there now. And it's going higher. We told you that we were going to see more global instability. And we are. We're seeing that nations like Iran, are increasing the amount of global terror, uh, and they're waiting for the Biden administration to give them even more money to lift all the sanctions so that they can have even more global terror. Yes, Cuba, nuclear power is the solution. It is the safest and cleanest that exists. But if you're telling kids from the age of five years old that they have to be progressive and progressivism is the only answer and part of progressivism is green energy or they will die, which is a lie, then that is not going to happen. You're not going to see nuclear power as being one of the results. And that's, that should scare people. And by the way, when I say that the numbers are really bad, I'm getting the numbers from the United States, the Bureau of Labor Statistics. I'm getting my data from them directly. I'm looking at Deutsche Bank out of CNN Business. I'm looking at the information from Larry Summers, a former Treasury Secretary of the United States, talking about the Fed and how it has so desperately, so horrendously failed the American people by not increasing rates sooner. This isn't stuff that I'm just making up out of the top of my head. I'm not just ranting away without any evidence. The evidence is all around us. The news media won't focus on it. You have to search for it. You have to be able to put the pieces together because they're giving you one story here, one story there, and they're not connecting it. I just told you how energy, how America, not being a an exporter of oil and gas has led to increased prices of energy around the world and how that has then led back to inflation in the United States and the rest of the world. It isn't that hard to figure out 
but you have to read a bunch of different articles from a bunch of different sources to put the information together to be able to say, oh, well, it's obvious that it's going higher. We haven't reached the peak yet. Why doesn't the news media want to tell you this? Because they want you to vote in a certain way. And they have been training people for years, for decades. They have been training our students to think in a certain way so that they will become adults who think in only a certain way. They don't ask questions. They don't challenge anybody. They say, if it comes from the major news media, it must be true. Even as we see report after report, how many times have we seen in just the last six months where we have seen that something that the news media tells us is true, six months later, they're telling us, nope, the exact opposite is true, that they lied to us in the first place, that they knew the information they told us was wrong and they didn't care. How many times have we seen that? And yet, we have trained our kids to believe everything that comes from the left-leaning media, that the left-leaning media is a pinnacle of truth, that CNN is absolutely looking out for your best interest as the, as the members of CNN are abusing children and actually doing exactly opposite what they're telling the public to do. So, yes, Kuba, uh, my background does include, I've studied some science over the years, but I'm not a scientist. But you know what the thing is? You don't need to be a scientist to read the reports, to read the data that is being given by the United States government and around the world. Read the data, look at the experts, and look at what they have found. And it comes to the same conclusions I'm coming to, I just happen to be a black Republican, which makes me the next closest thing to the devil, at least according to progressives. User been banned mentions printing money. The more money that you print, the less there is the value of currency. Well, we've talked about that many times on this program as well. When you have $30 trillion and you're adding another $5 trillion of spending on top of that, when you are adding tens of trillions of dollars of debt. Yeah, your money's worthless. That's what we saw in the 1980s during the banana republics. I know most people today are too young. They have no idea what that is. But I, I'm, I am old enough to know that if you just print money forever, like Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez has said, like Andrew Yang has promoted, this is an idea that they suggest that we can just print money forever. Well, we saw what happened to South America, all of the nations of South America, when they did that. They went into hyperinflation. It doesn't work. It's not a good plan. And we've been talking about that. And again, we've been talking about all of this for months. I've been on record publicly stating this. And there has yet to be any evidence that has come out that counters what I've been talking about, I wish that it would. I would like to be wrong and that inflation would not hit 15%. I'd like there to not be a recession. I'd like us not to go into stagflation. I pray that I will be wrong about this, that these things won't happen. But I'm telling you, it's going to happen. And I see no evidence that's going to tell us otherwise. And no one in the news media is, has the balls to stand up and say, well, this is how bad it's going to get. And we are on that trajectory, and there is virtually nothing that can be done at this point to stop that. The only thing we can do is shorten how long we're going to go through this problem if we take the corrective steps today to fix the problem, which is not going to be able to be fixed for at least 18 more months. You're looking at 2024 before you see things get better. In the best case scenario, and I don't think Joe Biden or Kamala Harris or anyone in the Biden-Harris administration is smart enough to realize that what they need to do, because they're the ones who brought us into the problem in the first place, telling us, don't worry, everything's perfect. It's fine. It's rosy. Don't believe me? Look at G January of 2022. Joe Biden started the year telling us everything's perfectly fine. Don't worry. It's, the economy is great. It's ridiculous. User mentions that, wait, aren't they telling the public to do the same, the whole groomer stuff? Well, yeah. They were, 
the news media and the left would like the public support in teaching children how to be more progressive. And thank God there are parents all over the nation that are disagreeing in their school boards. But the answer from the left was, oh, you're going to resist this? No problem. We're going to use the full power of the FBI and the federal government under Merrick Garland, the United States AG, to investigate parents taking care of their children and helping to educate their children. Tell me this isn't a broken system the way they have it. That we have to break this cycle of empowering these nut jobs. And again, I invite Congressman Antonio Delgado to come on to this program. Tell me how I'm wrong. I invite candidate Joshua uh, Riley, who's running for the New York 22nd District, to come on to this program and tell me how I'm wrong. I invite Francis Connolly, who's running for the New York 22nd District, to tell me how I am wrong. I am inviting Alexandra Hunt, running for the Pennsylvania 3rd District, to come onto this program and tell me how I am wrong. I invite Nancy Pelosi, AOC, Chuck Schumer, Kirsten Gillibrand, Adam Schiff. Um, let's go down the list. I invite them to come onto this program and tell me how I misunderstand. But they won't do it. Kuba says, but anyway, I think you're a bit over-exaggerating the inflation problem. As for the 2022 data, U.S. is 64th in the world with 8.5% inflation. No, it's not really acceptable in the United States, Cuba. That is considered high in the United States. And considering where we were, it is a dramatic increase. The United States average is about 4.25% to uh, 6%. So we are above that. And we are increasing dramatically. And while that is the official number, 8.5% that you're quoting, the real world go to the store and buy things is 22 to 30%. And it's going to get higher. But again, I want to be wrong. I wish I was over-exaggerating. I wish I was. But all the data that I've been talking about since, well, for the last year and a half, I haven't been wrong. I'd like to be wrong. I haven't been. It's in the best interest of the world that I am wrong. I just don't see it. I know, and user has been banned, mentions that they changed the calculation of inflation in the 1980s. That's true. Um, and yes, going by the previous manner of counting, we'd be far higher. But again, just looking at it as is, it's a problem. And the reason why so many people don't see it, why so many aren't seeing it, especially our youth, it's because they've been taught to, to do com, common core math. They've been taught critical race theory instead of being taught about math. And this is something that we are ex exporting around the world. We're, we're, we're trying to teach people that math is white and white is racist. And that's what we're exporting, and that's what we're teaching, instead of teaching 2 plus 2 equals 4. And we are sticking the FBI against regular citizens who say, no, teaching our kids 2 plus 2 equals 4 is important at 5, 6, 7, 8 years of age, and that's more important, and the only thing that's important. Not to teach them how to hate white people. And again, anyone on the left, anyone who's a centrist, anyone who's a libertarian, anyone who's a Republican who think I am wrong, I am happy to hear your words. I will treat you with absolute respect. Do not conflate my passion with disrespect. I will passionately and respectfully listen to every word of anyone who has a different opinion. I want to hear it. If you have evidence, if there are sites that I can look up, there's evidence that I can look at that says I am wrong in the conclusions that I am making, I am happy to do that. But I can tell you, just going back two weeks, you heard me talking about a recession, and here it is now, 
that we hear the rest of the major news media and economists now talking about the fact that there's going to be a recession. We've been ahead of this because it's not that hard to see if you're looking, but the news media is making it hard for you to see it because they want to promote a certain ideology. They want certain people in power and it's not you and it's not for your best interest. Cooper says, well, I have to agree. Official inflation and real inflation are completely different. That's absolutely true. Absolutely true. When we go to the store, that isn't the inflation that we see. I wish it was. It'd be so much better. What is that you put up there? User has been banned. Two plus two equals potato. <laughs> That's funny. I tell you, folks, I, I, I'm, I'm looking at all this stuff, and, and it's so bad. It's so amazing to me that we've trained kids to defend this stuff. We have kids in college who are defending racism. They are defending sexism because that's just good. I don't, I don't understand the logic. It's a good thing to be racist and sexist that they have taught these kids so well that these kids, as of March 8th, were standing out and going, no, 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 but I want racism. I want sexism in my classroom that I want teachers to have racism and sexism, that they want it in their politics, that they care so little about themselves and their politics that they are willing to be corrupt from the beginning. If, if a Ma Alexandra Hunt wins, I guarantee you, I, well, let me correct that. I have every reason to believe that within two years, she will be corrupt. She will be accepting bribes. And she will be continuing to accept money from OnlyFans to be able to continue to be in office because she's part of the woke ideology. That Quentin, who, God help us, if he actually does one day become a mathematician or a physicist, can you imagine the horror story of what he's going to do because his politics trumps and, is, and, and overrides his actual scientific thought? He can't even be scientific enough to realize that a student isn't a mathematician, that a student isn't a physicist. He can't even get that through his head. And imagine what he's going to do when he gets out into the real world and has to have jobs where he's going to be given responsibilities. What do you think he's going to do? How bad do you think he's going to screw up? Just like the rest of those students who are asking for racism, they're asking for sexism. And what happens when inevitably, as always, the racism and the sexism turns against them? What happens when they are suddenly subjected to racism? Oh, you're black? That's fantastic. But you're not black and gay. Oh, you're Hispanic and you're gay? Fantastic. But you're not trans. There's always another person who's going to be put in front of you to keep you out of power and to keep you under the thumb of a government that is becoming more and more authoritarian. And as America becomes more authoritarian, so does the world. Because we are the beacon of freedom. We define what freedom is in the world. That is a fact. Whether people like it or not doesn't matter. You could hate America all you want, but we are the definition of freedom. We lead the world in freedom. And if we are becoming more autocratic, more of a dictatorship, more of a socialist nation, then the rest of the world is following in our lead and they are becoming even more so, which is worse for the rest of the world. User has been banned mentions that uh, Alexandra Hunt the candidate for the Pennsylvania 3rd District, is already corrupt, paying her boyfriend from campaign funds, allegedly. I didn't see that. But it wouldn't surprise me. I mean, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez did that. Yeah, I, and I know that they call it anti-racism, and they call it new math. And yeah, in 1984, the book, they called it New Speak. But... It shouldn't be that hard to figure out. I mean, come on, folks. We all have the Library of Alexandria. 
each and every everyone who's got a smartphone. You have the Library of Alexandria here. You can go back over centuries of information at the touch of your fingertips, and you can see this is racism. It's not anti-racism. It is racism. Oh, uh, user, yes, I did mention Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, but I was speak, speaking specifically about Alexandra Hunt uh, in this case, who I was talking about earlier in the show, who is using an OnlyFans, she has an OnlyFans page to pay for her to run for Congress. So that's the difference I was making there. I know, it's Easter, and we're supposed to be hopeful. And we're supposed to look forward to the rebirth, the rebirth of the world. Well, we are seeing the rebirth of the world. And sadly, that rebirth isn't positive. It isn't helping anyone. It isn't making the world better. It's making it worse. Yeah, user, I know, it's shocking. And I guarantee you that news story is going to disappear in two days no one else in the news media is going to be talking about this. In two days, she's going to continue with her campaign, and the majority of people in Philadelphia are going to be so busy trying to not die, to not be shot because of the rise of crime in Philadelphia. They're going to be so busy that when she promises, don't worry, I'm going to solve crime by defunding the police, they're going to be so desperate, they're going to vote for her, and she's going to become a member of Congress, and it's going to be sad. I am terrified. I don't even know who's running against her. I don't know if there's a libertarian or a conservative or a Republican that's running against her. I don't care. I'm, I'm not trying to promote uh, one party or another when I tell you that Alexandra Hunt needs to not be elected. And I think my reason for it is pretty clear. Now, if people disagree with me, okay, tell me why. Tell me why what I've discussed is not important, how it's not a factor that's going to affect 725,000 people, how she's not a danger to Congress. And when I say a danger to Congress, I mean danger as in the destroying the stability and the nature of Congress to be responsive to the public, that she is more likely to be corrupt than almost any other member of Congress, in my opinion. I don't want people to start thinking that I'm, I don't know, more of a right-winger than they already think I am, which I am. So, user has been banned, says, how much have they mentioned the shooting of in Columbia, South Carolina? Pretty sure it was gang-related, which is why you're not hearing about it. Uh, Cuba says, I have to admit, from a European point of view, America should become strong against, again as a counterweight to Eastern autocratic countries like Russia, China, and North Korea. I agree. And when we are strong, those nations are kept in check, and the global stability increases. But that's not what's happening because we're becoming more socialist. We're not becoming a stronger nation. No one thinks that Joe Biden is strong. Nobody thinks that Kamala Harris is strong. They've said it. They won't even take their phone calls. No one thinks they're strong, which is why the world is becoming worse and why all of the problems that they're doing are, it's like a domino. It's like an exponential domino. They keep knocking them over and things get exponentially worse and worse and worse. And the problem is, the United States isn't a small nation. It's not a small economy. We're not a small military. We're the leader of the world. And therefore, when, it starts, when we start having these catastrophic changes, it hits everyone. And usually it hits everyone else way, way worse. But I'm always open to hear when people have to say, well, Mike, you've got it wrong. You, you misunderstand. The kids in Binghamton University, 
they're not being racist. It's not racist to pick people based on the color of their skin and their gender. Please explain to me how that isn't racist. How isn't that racist? Selecting people or choosing people or preferring people on the basis of the color of their skin, not because they're a good student, not because they have the answer, not because they're, they want to participate, but because they are the right skin color. We see that in our politics. That's what Kathy Hochul is doing right now. The same thing that these students are doing. Oh, it's okay. Let's be racist. That's why KBJ, the Supreme Court Justice Jackson, is only there today because of sexism and racism. Had to be a black woman. Had to be a black woman Democrat. Had to be. Not because she's the best person, because that was never on the table. And that's the problem that we have. These people are, are getting elected not because they're the best person. Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez isn't the best person. Elon Omar, Alexandra Hunt, Hunt um, Josh Riley, Anthony, Antonio Delgado, they're not the best people. They're just the right check mark. They fill in the right checkbox. And that's it. And that's why America is weak. Because we're, we're electing checkboxes and we're passing checkbox leg legislation that doesn't actually deal with any of the root problems or help any of the people. Cuba mentions, in my own opinion, the United States was tested by Russia if they will react properly on conflict escalation in the Ukraine. User mentions that he agrees with Cuba and that Russia saw the chance and took it. Well, that's exactly what happened. Because under the Obama administration in 2014, well, there was 2008 uh, into 2009, the United States was weak with Georgia. So Russia decided to go to the Ukraine. They got the, they got the uh, Crimea. And then when that was under Obama, we got a strong president under President Trump. Whether you like him or not, doesn't matter. And then they said, okay, we're not going to do anything. And then they got a weak president again under Joe Biden. And they said, oh, well, it's back to normal. They went right back barn stomping. And don't think that North Korea and China and Iran aren't paying attention to this and saying, oh, well, we can get away with just about anything. Because Joe Biden can't handle it. And America's weak. And the progressive snowflakes that we have in, that are becoming the next generation they can't handle anything. It's why the American military is becoming, I don't even know what it is. Now you have to worry about non-binary people in the military. We have to have a special rooms and special clothing for non-binary people. We have to have special training for non-binary people because they wouldn't be in the United States military. No. Sorry, no. The military is supposed to be uniform. Everyone's the same. Everyone's treated the same. You don't get special treatment, period. If you can't, if you need special treatment, don't go into the military. And you know what? That got us through two world wars. I think that system works pretty well. We have the strongest military in the world and it's worked pretty well. Making it more inclusive and having more people's needs addressed and paying for transgender surgeries, that's not what the military is for. That's not their job. User as man says, under Trump, I think he would have pressed the button. I know I would, while I was on the phone, saying I wouldn't and claim whatever they see is just a test. Just getting rid of the duds in a more fun way. Well, that would have been extreme and I would have been against that for President Trump. But we had options. We had diplomacy and options well beforehand. If you go back and start looking, at, look at November of 2021, as Russia was gearing up, and we knew they were gearing up for months, we had options. And Biden was saying, well, Russia's going to win. That's what, that's what Joe Biden said in December. I believe it was December 13th of 2021. 
He was encouraging them. He was trying to tell the Ukraine to appease Russia and just give up the eastern and southern portions of the Ukraine. He was encouraging them. We can't forget that. We can't forget that the world watched as Joe Biden and the United States military under Joe Biden was defeated by the Taliban. That 9,000 American citizens have been abandoned in Afghanistan to this day. To this day. And Joe Biden lied to every single American and everyone in the world saying that we got everyone home and we haven't. We haven't even gotten close. There are thousands that remain in Afghanistan and he armed the Taliban. He created the first terrorist army. I mean, legit army. He gave them tanks. He gave them weapons and bullets and money. If that's not the definition of weak, what is? And I know some people don't like that I'm saying these things, but it doesn't. Whether you like it or not doesn't change whether it's true or not. And whether it's having an impact on us and the world. That doesn't change with your feelings. And I understand they're teaching feelings right now in our colleges. Alongside teaching sexism and racism, they're saying that feelings are important. They taught them so well and they've been teaching it so long that Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez felt comfortable, and I've, I mentioned this a lot lately, but it's important. Our, our system of education is so corrupt and so biased that Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez felt confident to go on to 60 Minutes to talk to the world and to say that she, as a member of government, of the United States government, believes in her feelings. Her feelings are more important than facts, than truth than being empirically, grammatically, semantically correct. That means she's willing to lie to you. As long as her feelings are okay with it, she will lie to you. This is what we are teaching our kids, and they're trying to teach it to kids as young as five years of age. How could I not protest that? How can we not talk about that? And why won't the news media talk about that? If they think it's so great, why aren't they advertising this? Because they know that if they told the public the truth, that the public would reject it. Just like the public, when they heard what Quentin had to say, when Quentin Merritt had to speak. Matter of fact, I'm going to look that up for you right now. I'm going to, give me a moment. I want to show you Quentin Merritt. I want to show you what the public reaction was to him. Osip Ben Shapiro. But so this is the actual video, his actual video on his screen. He has 7,798 comments. And let's just take a quick look at the comments real fast. Um, as a scientist who happens to be an expert in the field, oh, well, nope, that's a joke. Let's look for a real one. <clears throat> Here it is. 444 comments. Calling yourself a mathematician physicist as an undergrad is like calling yourself special ops in boot camp. Don't pretend. Uh, 100 comments, 100 likes on this. You have to achieve something in the real world to be able to call yourself a mathematician and a physicist. Studying subjects just makes you a student. I love how he thinks by putting this video, he was going to redeem himself or something. But absolutely no one is deluded, is defending this childish and disrespectful behavior. Let me give you something. 317 people like it. There are over 7,000 dislikes. This is why why YouTube hid the dislikes for people like Quentin. 7,000 people dislike this. He's got 64,000 people who've watched it. Over 10% of the people who have seen this and listened to him and listened to what the University of North Carolina has taught him, listening to what his teachers have taught him since grade school, the same teachers that taught Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez and Cori Bush 
that poison that they taught, over 10% of his audience absolutely despise what he's saying. And of these comments, you can go through over and over again. Self-awareness level, 9,000. You didn't roast anyone but yourself here, lad. This guy is the enemy of science, kindness, honesty, and intellect. What, what is hilarious is that this is forever on the internet, forever following this kid, every job, every interview, every single time someone looks him up. Holy crap, this is his legacy. They're not saying that as a positive. I'm just looking randomly here. To be considered a mathematician, again, you have to get a degree first. This guy is bragging about his intelligence, publicly embarrasses himself by resorting to a tantrum filled with childish insults, and then still manages to embarrass himself further by making this video. Achieving this level of cringe is more impressive than his alleged award. And here's the thing. 317 people like this. It's not even 1% of, of the people who viewed this. But this is where our education system leads us, to people like Quentin, to situations where someone is so befuddled, so lost, that it is obvious to the overwhelming majority of the public. And yet that's considered virtuous. That's considered good. We are going into a very dark direction. Uh, if there would be any protest to return the YouTube dislike button, I wouldn't hesitate to participate, says Kuba. Well, that's never going to happen. Because the very same progressives that run YouTube are some of the same people who run Twitter. And we can see, when we look at Twitter, Elon wants to rebirth. By the way, you can still use the re you dislike button. They just don't want to show you the number. But you can look it up. You can look up the dislikes. It, it does show. Because it's still there. They just don't want you to see that people are rejecting critical race theory. That people are rejecting sexism and racism being taught to students. That they are rejecting the progressive ideology overwhelmingly. Even Democrats dis disavow the progressive ideology. Moderates disavow this. Libertarians, people in the center. It is a very loud but very minor movement. And we know this because look at what they did to Elon. Poison pill. They're terrified. They're terrified that one man might, might change a system and let people actually be able to speak. That he might remove all of the restrictions that people have. All of the things that punish you for being Republican or conservative. That he might might just go out there and actually allow free speech to exist. They are terrified. They're, they're saying, oh, no, no, you can't do this on our platform. No, no, go to somewhere else. Why? Why can't he buy your platform and have free speech? They're, they're terrified of this. This is Kevin Beaumont. He says he's a cybersecurity plebe and he's a uh, blue check. And he's terrified terrified that Twitter could be a free speech platform. Elon wants to rebirth Twitter as a free speech platform. He's afraid of free speech. This is what the left is about. Does anyone agree with that? I don't think so. I, I truly do not believe people agree with that. But if I'm wrong, call in 607-242-1582. Tell me why I'm wrong. Tell me why I'm misunderstanding. Tell me how this is positive. Shutting down free speech, how is that positive? Please tell me. <laughs> Sorry, got a message there. Uh, yes, he calls himself a cybersecurity plebe. I don't know why pleb, why we're supposed to take him seriously if that's what he describes himself. I don't know. The problem is that someone takes too personally that someone else doesn't share your point of view. You know what? That's life. People don't agree with you. It happens. 
I don't care. You know what? If you, if you believe in your conviction strong enough, then take the slings and arrows. And maybe, maybe because we're all human, you might be wrong. Maybe if, if you have everyone telling you how you are wrong, maybe you should listen to them. When everyone says that you've got it wrong, maybe, maybe there's something to it. When they say that what you're saying is fundamentally flawed, when they say you shouldn't teach five-year-olds about sex, that you shouldn't teach five-year-olds about how to be racist, when, they're telling, when everyone is ganging up and saying, don't teach that to five-year-olds, don't teach them to be racist, to be sexist, and to be, uh, uh, to be uh, involved in sex, to be sexually active, don't teach these kids that. When everyone is saying it, maybe, maybe they have at least a kernel of correct truth there. Is that such a crazy thing to envision? Such a crazy thing to think of? I don't know. Maybe I'm just misunderstanding it all. Could be. Could happen. So we've been on for about three hours today. And I'm thinking we, oh, wait a minute, user says, I can see why. Most people have their point of view. Some I just don't get, likely because those people are delusional. Sometimes they are. Sometimes they are. Um, but that doesn't mean we shut them down. Doesn't mean that we get to silence them. And I'm not asking for anyone to be silenced. But there are lots of people who are asking to be, for us to be silenced. I can tell you for a fact that I've already had, I've already been threatened that when I go to this protest on May 3rd, when I go to the SUNY Broom in Binghamton, a college, a New York State college, and when I go there to protest peacefully, to protest their teaching kids how to be racist and how to be sexist, when I go there to protest that, I have already been threatened that the police will be called to arrest me. For what? I don't know. The fact that I'm going to go and peacefully protest, something that the very same people at SUNY Broom were happy for all the protests in 2020. They were happy for the protests across the nation that were violent and burning down cities and left three dozen people dead. They were happy about that. That they didn't mind. That they allowed. SUNY Binghamton, as I showed you, they're happy to have protests that are, having, that are promoting sexism and racism. That's okay. But I say, and I told them, that I was going to protest against critical race theory, and they told me they're going to call the cops. There isn't even a charge. There isn't even anything I've done wrong. It hasn't even happened yet, and they have already threatened to arrest me which was meant to scare me, to tell me that I need to run away. They wanted to silence me by threatening me with an arrest on charges that don't exist for an event that hasn't happened. Guess what? I'm still going, and I'm not afraid. And if they want to arrest me, I hope they have a legitimate reason, because if they don't, I am suing the hell out of SUNY Broom. user says that that's the issue. We aren't allowed to laugh or even mock because feelings could be hurt. You know what? It is not my responsibility. Someone else's feelings aren't my responsibility. That's a fact. You're, you're not responsible for my feelings. I'm not responsible for yours. I'm not responsible to make sure that you only hear the things that you want to hear. That's not anyone's responsibility. If you don't like what you hear, then don't listen. Go somewhere else. Or counter what you're hearing. But that doesn't mean I don't get a right to speak. But that's what they want us to believe. That's what they want to do. This is where they are taking our children. This is where they're taking our society. And every single step of the way, we, wa we are watching our society crumble. Not just in the United States, but around the world. Because the United States... What, in the, in the United Kingdom, 
there's, uh, we've infected the United Kingdom with critical race theory. That doesn't even apply. Doesn't even apply to their culture. Has nothing to do with them. But uh, it's over there, and we're trying to get it into France, and we're trying to get it into Australia, and into New Zealand, and into Canada. We're infecting the world with these things. And that's terrifying. Yes, what they used to say is, if you don't like it, change the channel. Which I agree with. No one is forced to watch this. If you don't like what I'm saying, no one's forced to watch it. I'm also not forced to have to listen to the far left, to listen to the progressive movement, to listen to the racism and sexism that they are promoting. Except they want to force that on five-year-olds who don't, who don't know better. Five-year-olds who don't have the right of free speech, who don't know when to not listen to something because it's racist and sexist. They don't know. And that's why they're abusing the children. I, I truly believe that's abuse of children. And if you think I'm wrong, there goes the number above me, 607-242-1582, but I believe it's an abuse of children. This is child abuse. To teach them to become racist, to teach them to become sexist, to teach them how to, uh, to just be evil. Uh, Cuba says, could you link me an article describing that race theory that you're talking about? Uh, well, do you mean something like this paper? The article from The Atlantic? How does race affect a student's math education? Do you mean that one? How about this one? Uh, let's see. Of course, there's this one about Binghamton University. There's that one. And then there's another story. Uh, where is it? Hang on. No, no, Professor. Right. No. There's another one. But that gives you a, a couple of... So those are a couple of those stories. And again, at the end of the program, I always link all of the links of everything that I've shown on the program, all of the links for every article will be available in the description so that you're able to see it and you can read it through for yourself so that you can have full context. So everything, all 30 of the um, items that I've shown you so far today are going to be there. In fact, I left out one thing that I haven't talked about yet today. And that's North Korea. See, when, when America's weak and when we fail, oh, there it is. When we fail, this is what we get. Oops, come on, there it is. We get Kim Jong-un testing a, nu a missile to deliver nuclear weapons. That this is the 13th missile test that they have done. That they're about to do a nuclear weapons test. That Kim Jong-un is cheering and happy as he set off two missiles towards Japan over South Korea, flying 68 miles at a maximum altitude of 25 kilometers with a maximum speed of Mach 4. This is a problem. This is a big problem. Long-range nuclear tests have been paused since uh, Kim Jong-un met then-U.S. President Donald Trump for a bout of doomed diplomacy, which collapsed in 2019. Officials say, officials and analysts say North Korea may carry out its seventh nuclear test in the coming weeks. Did they do that after the failed diplomacy? I love it. It's failed diplomacy. It was failed diplomacy in 2019 with Donald Trump. Kim, Kim Jong-un spoke to Donald Trump. Kim Jong-un stopped nuclear tests, uh, 
excuse me, nuclear testing and missile test flights under the Trump administration. Under the Biden-Harris administration, Kim Jong-un won't even take a phone call from Kamala Harris or Joe Biden. They won't even have discussions with them. And he's firing 13 missiles since January. 13 since January. He has established that he can drop a 250 kiloton nuclear weapon in the United States. But it's failed diplomacy in 2019 under Donald Trump. But now under the Biden administration, it's okay. It's okay that we have more nuclear tests. We have more missile tests. The world, you know, the fact that they are threatening Japan and South Korea on a regular basis, that's okay because it's Joe Biden. But Donald Trump, when all of that stopped, that was failed diplomacy. Does that make sense to you? So, a user has been banned and says, I don't think that they did that many when Trump was in office. No, they didn't. It's like having someone who seems like a loose cannon was good. It is good. Same thing with Reagan. He was considered loose cannon too. And guess what? The world got calm. Global stability increased. It decreases under people like Clinton or Carter or Joe Biden or Barack Obama for that matter. And yes, Cuba, uh, I haven't been playing EVE for a while because look at the world. Look at the coverage that I've been providing. There's a lot of stories I've been doing. So no, I haven't been on EVE in quite some time. Um, but provided that I have the money, yes, I will get back on there. Got to be able to keep the lights on. Got to be able to have uh, the internet on so I can speak with everybody. So that's my first priority. By the way, I haven't mentioned it all episode. If you've been watching this, especially if you've made it this far, please do me a favor and like, share, subscribe, especially subscribe. We're trying to get to 1,234 subscribers before the end of the year. It's a very simple target. We're not asking for a lot. We are asking for your help in doing that. Um, if you feel like it, you can always donate a dollar, a uh, dollar a month. I mean. It's better, you're getting more entertainment and more involved in watching this program than you do from Disney Plus, that's for sure. Yeah, Eve is, uh, it, it takes up a bit of time, but it's a good, I, I, I really enjoyed playing the game Eve. I just have been so distracted with trying to keep up with the world. It's crazy. And we have the elections coming up, and it's going to get crazier. All right, so we've been on for about three hours and 18 minutes. And that's all the stuff that I wanted to cover, all the stuff that I wanted to talk to you about. Uh, is there something that people wanted to ask me before about any subject? Was there a subject that I missed that's happening? Is it, were you aware of the things that I've covered so far today? Uh, was it interesting and effective for you? That's what I want to ask. Um, so let me stay on for a minute. And uh, the elections here in the United States are going to be in November. It's November 8th are the 2022 midterm elections, which means in the United States, every two years, we have to reelect members of Congress. Every four years, we elect a new president. And every six years, we uh, elect members of the Senate. So gives you an idea of the timeframes that we work on. So it, it's interesting because every two year, every other year, Congress is going crazy trying to justify why they should be in office. Free cell phones for illegal immigrants. Mike, what do you mean free There's free, someone's trying to give illegal aliens free cell phones? Hang on. I didn't, I don't remember seeing that. I know they want to give them medical help. What? 
Oh, I missed this. Day after my birthday. Uh, so let's see. So, in 2013, 2013, President Obama, we were told President Obama would not give cell phones to illegal aliens. But, three days ago, oh, Joe Biden is giving smartphones away to illegals crossing the border. Oh, I did hear about that. That's right. They, they're giving them the cell phones so that they can... Uh, make it to their court date for being in the country illegally. It's stupid. This is where our tax dollars are going. They are giving, you know what? There's homeless people who need cell phones. I need a new cell phone. They're giving cell phones to people who aren't even in our country. Well, hell, they're letting them vote in our elections too. Yeah, it's supposed to be for tracking because there's no way possible that an illegal alien who broke the law to come into the United States there's no way that they would lose their cell phone, drop it, or break it. Yeah, because, you know, they're so law-abiding. Come on. Really? Why are we wasting money on this? Just close the border. God help me. Just close the border. It... it, it. <sighs> The things we waste money on, it makes no sense to me. Yes, they, all, they could sell the cell phone. They could break the cell phone. They could hide the cell phone. They could leave the cell phone in a, a room with their best friend and leave it there for God knows how many years. This is not tracking them. It's not a tracking device. And in the meantime... What, are we paying for their cell service too? We gave them a phone. Does that mean we're going to pay for them to be able to make phone calls too? This is all on tax dollar, taxpayers' dollars. How about this? Let's not give them cell phones. Let's not give them cell service. And how about we cut taxes in American citizens? How about that? Let me keep a little bit more of my taxes rather than giving it to some illegal alien from another country that I never invited in here that no one in America invited here. And this is supposed to, no wonder we have 221,000 people who are trying to get into America. Hey, you go to America, you get a cell phone. They give you a free phone. Isn't that great? America is the land of milk and honey. They give you phones. They send doctors to take care of you. They raise your kids. They put your kids up in hotels. Why wouldn't you? Why the hell am Oh. And that's all factually true. We do put the kids, the single kids who show up in America, there are so many of them, that we rent out hotels for them and for families of illegal aliens that cross the border. We are literally doing that. We're spending billions on it. We are spending money to give them cell phones. We're taking our doctors away from the VA, our veterans, and we're giving them over to illegal aliens. What is wrong with these people that are in the Biden-Harris administration? These people are out of their bloody minds. But I would be happy to hear from anyone who can tell me why they should do that. Please tell me why we should be obligated to put these people up in hotels, which we don't do for our homeless, to give them cell phones that we don't do for our homeless or our poor, and that we're going to get them doctors for free that we won't do for any other American. Just completely free. Please. Tell me why we should do this for illegal aliens. We won't even do it for our own citizens. Users been banned says it's the same in the UK. They're offered housing and don't take it. Hotels are nicer. I mean, if I could live in a hotel, why not? Hey, hot chicks. Oh, God, you've missed a whole bunch of stuff, hot chicks. 
Hot chicks, let me ask you something. Uh, this will be interesting. You're, you're one of our female viewers here. So I want to ask your opinion. Did you hear that in Pennsylvania, Alexandra Hunt is running for Congress and she is funding Congress, her run for Congress by having an OnlyFans account, which she is proud to have and she wants and she's looking forward to all the coverage so that she can get paid on OnlyFans so she can run for Congress. Let me ask you, Hot Chicks, do you think that degrades women in politics? Whatever you think. If you think it's perfectly fine, tell me that. If you think that it's good, it's bad, whatever. What do you think as a woman? Because I think every woman should be angry. They should be insulted. That it's degrading. It, it takes away from women. And, and their abilities in in politics. And by the way, the beard's at the, at the stage where it gets itchy. Oh, I don't know. It, 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 I'm so disappointed in this government. I'm so disappointed in what's happening here. I'm so disappointed in how badly we are hurting the rest of the world. America needs to get back to being a manufacturing country. We need to be a, next, uh, a net exporter of natural gas and oil. And we, we need to stand up to Russia and China, Iran and uh, North Korea, and tell them that they can't get away with what they're doing. Thank you for calling into the program. This is No Sound Bites Allowed. I'm your host, Michael Voss. And with whom am I speaking? Your first name. Hey, Mike. It's Jason. How you doing? Hey, Jason. What's going on? Uh, not too much. Well, actually, a lot. Just uh, hanging out with the family and stuff like that. I I, I know it's did a Easter. quick uh, skim of your show that you had so far. And I didn't see you talk about the Twitter incident. But did you uh, talk about Elon Musk and what's going on there? Very little. Very little. Very little. Um, What was your... I mean, perspective on the whole situation with the, the poison, uh, you know, pill scenario that now they're trying to do to, to get rid of him on there. It, it just shows you that they're not concerned about money. This isn't about money. This isn't even about freedom. This is about maintaining a stranglehold over the public. This is about silencing people. Um, I showed on the screen before, and I'll show it again. This is from Kevin Beaumont. He's one of the blue checks on Twitter, supposed to be somehow involved in cybersecurity. And he says it clearly. Elon wants to rebirth Twitter as a free speech platform. We've been through that journey. It led to Trump and such. So he says, no. They know that this is about free speech. They know that, this, that having Elon in the lead would mean more free speech for people. They don't want people to speak freely. They want them to be silenced. They want anyone with a different point of view to be silenced and punished. And I, I no. think that's terrifying. I'm, yeah, I mean, being a, you know, a, a stockbroker yourself at one point and dealing with things like this, I mean, from just a, a you know, financial perspective about you know, the people who own the stock and the different um, you know, like between like Vanguard and BlackRock and these major comp companies that are, you know, basically using other people's money to invest in things. Mm -hmm. um, and they're willing now, it looks like, to the, allow the, the stock to tank. I mean, what, what's your perspective on them, like literally just, you know, throwing stockholders pretty much under the bus, just, you know, not, they're not there. And then like the board itself, you know, not standing up to mm -hmm. try to actually make, you know, money for you know, the holders, because I mean, Should generally, my opinion is yeah. that that's what they're supposed to do is make money for the stockholders. But they, I don't know, what, what's your thoughts? There should be a massive lawsuit on this because they, they, when you have a publicly traded company, you have a fiduciary, a financial responsibility to make 
when possible uh, and when legal to make as much money as possible for your shareholders. That's your responsibility. That's why they have shareholders. To not take a legitimate, credible offer, $54 for a takeover, which is more than Twitter has ever traded at. Twitter has never traded at $54. In fact, Goldman Sachs has a sell order on them. They say that they are not worth $30. Goldman, the very same people who said that Elon's bid is not uh, is too cheap are the same people who said that it's not worth, it's trading at like $45, $48 right now. And Goldman says it's overvalued. It is not worth, it's worth $30. So this means that the board have violated their responsibility to shareholders. They should be sued to hell. That's from the financial aspect. Uh, yeah, that, that, that's just insane, you know, as far as that aspect goes. You know, <laughs> when you have a major company saying that it's not, it's not worth that much money, he's willing to pay, you know, $20 or, yeah, $20 more. Obviously, they say it's not worth 30 I mean, he's almost willing to give it a 30%, you know, buyout. Yeah. And Goldman Sachs now is turning around and saying, no, don't do it, you know, even though they're actually heavily invested in a company. And they're actually... I mean, I mean, Goldman Sachs, I mean, technically is just a, yeah, so it's like <laughs> you give your, your money to Goldman Sachs and they're supposed to grow your money and then they're, they're pulling stuff like this. It's like, how, how, can, how can you trust any of these institutions? It's like, and the same thing goes with Vanguard and BlackRock, you know? Well, like they're pulling the same game. Well, it's, it's like, obvious oh. that they're, this isn't, a, like I said, it's not about money. This is about freedom. It's about free speech. It's about the ability for people to speak and to share their thoughts. And they do not want that. They do not want people to think. They do not want people to talk. They want people to obey. Otherwise, they take the money. And they can't even say it's about technology because he's trying to innovate and create more things to make Twitter even more valuable because he wants to innovate it and, and move it forward. So they can't even say that, well, we have plans. No, he has plans to make it better, more accessible, and to bring back the subscriber base that they've been losing, to make it more competitive and continue to be a leader. So on every aspect of this, from a financial standpoint, Elon's offer makes sense and is the right thing to do. Their action is purely and absolutely political. They want to silence people. They want the power to keep people absolutely silent and that besides being a violation of the first amendment is insulting and sick in my opinion yeah what, what's your opinion too with the other investor there what the saudis is that who's 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 got money in it? saudi prince or something like that yeah one of the saudi princes has a, a large position as well as a single shareholder and that, yeah so we're getting advice and here's here's something that a lot of people aren't thinking about and this poison pill for Elon Musk, the left is taking the same side as Saudi Arabia. If you are gay in Saudi Arabia, you will be stoned, stoned to death. They will beat you. They do not give rights to gays, lesbians, transgender, blah, blah, blah. They do not have rights for them. They, this is a nation that was willing to kill a reporter because they didn't like what he had to say. This is a country that restricts women's rights. And this is who they are aligning with. This is who's, who's on their side. This is their team. This is Team Twitter. A country that has absolutely no respect for gays and lesbians and transgenders. And this is the people on their team. And they're like, yes, we have the support of Saudi Arabia. People who hate the liberal ideology. Does that make sense? It, it, I mean, it, it is insane, you know, how far it's, it's, it's interesting, the alliances, you know, um, that, that are, are made here. They're just, they're, they're insane. I mean, this is actually kind of interesting, you know, I guess when you looked at Ilhan Omar 
you know, and her ties in with the radical, you know, Islamic fundamentalist and, you know, the left as well, too, because it makes the same um, connection as far as when it comes to, you know, homosexuals, you know, and transgenders. And that whole scheme is basically, you know, that sector of, you know, the, you know, Islamic population who she, you know, stems from would basically wipe out that entire demographic. Yet that there is, you know, her, her core core you know, demographic, which she actually targets, you know, for her party. Um, so, yeah, it's just, it's, it's, it's nuts. Um, by the way, these, uh, by yep. the way, if, if anyone doubts and thinks that I'm being hyperbolic, here it is. Human Dignity Trust, their organization, Saudi Arabia. Saudi Arabia criminalizes same-sex sexual activity between men and women. The gender expression of trans people is also criminalized. Sentences include a maximum penalty of death. There is evidence of the law being enforced in recent years, and LGBT people are regularly subjected to discrimination and violence. They are taking the side of people who criminalize being LGBTQ, and these are the people on Team Twitter. This is Team Twitter. I'm not making it up. This is from the left itself. So go on. Yeah, and you know an- another you know ex- you know crazy alliances too is is that the left is always you know knocking on um, you know Wall Street and you know the the corporate powers and all those mm-hmm. individuals who are there and yet you know when it comes to the voices like for example whose voice gets to be heard the most is the AOC is the Bernie Sanders the ones who basically are always saying well Wall, Wall Street's so evil Wall Street's so that and yet the ones who are shutting down free speech the vanguard the black rocks you know and these Saudi princes that's who ba- Bernie Sanders and AOC are you know walking hand in hand with to actually have this this done you know it's just it's 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 insane it is insane i, I don't understand i mean when you think about they're against corporate greed. Vanguard is the gre- one of the greediest com- companies known for buying up houses across the nation that people and turning into apartments that people can't afford. And that's Team Twitter. I, I, don't, I don't understand how the mental gymnastics that people in the progressive mindset have to go through every day. Sexism is only sexism if it's a sexism we don't like. Racism is only racism if it's racism we don't like. Uh, it, their mental gymnastics makes no sense to me. Yeah. Oh, I mean, it was the same, you know, and then it goes in, you know, I would even tie into the, um, what, the, the granddaughter of Disney there, you know. She has, you know, a large, you know, portion of Disney. And, you know, basically she was saying she didn't agree with the, you know, the, the, the Florida law. And, you know, the left, they hate they hate the corporate. They hate the every the, the money gets handed down, you know, to to people who didn't work for it. And yet, you know, this individual speaks up. They're like, you know, the praising, you know, the living heck. heck you know, every word that she says now is, you know, comes right from, you know, basically Disney itself. So you got to listen to it. So yeah, it's a, the, 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 there is no consistency, um, you know, with their arguments when it comes to comes to free speech and 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 what they, it's it's all it is it is all power. You know, it's all about power. Um, putting in you know their hands to redistribute the way that they see and the, and remake the world in the way that they they feel that it should be um but yeah i mean it's it is it is very interesting though to hear your perspective though you know especially when it came to you know twitter and just to, to understand though is like you know these companies you know i mean i i think how deep it goes too though is is that you know i mean we're talking about blackrock and we're talking about these big names and, and we're talking about i mean everybody's pension and things are actually invested somehow probably got a piece of Twitter in it. You know what I mean? And just to think that the thing that gets me and I'm thinking about this is yeah. What's the consequence of this? What's so what's next? Okay. We have, we know that Twitter is working with, we, we see the people they're working with. They're working with the super rich corporations. They're working with Saudi Arabia that kills gays and trans and they want to shut down free speech. They are actively trying to shut down free speech. Who benefits from that scenario? A company that's buying up houses that people can't afford to live in, a company that's killing gays and transgenders, a, con- a company that's shutting down free speech, actively, actively has said they do not believe in the First Amendment, they do not believe in free speech. 
What positive could possibly come from this that these, that these progressives are standing behind, that they are cheering on? What positive comes out of that? Uh, for Americans, none. But for, for anywhere, Russia, anywhere. For Russia, China, now they benefit from it, that's for sure. The Saudis benefit from it. You know, all these, you know, the, the, the radical, you know, a fundamental Iran, they, they benefit from it, you know. Aren't those um, supposed to be the people that the left are against? Isn't that what they're supposed to be fighting against? Yeah. I mean, I'm on the right here. I'm supposed to, according to the left, I'm the evil bad guy. I'm a black Republican, which makes me literally their version of the devil. And I do not agree with killing gays and trans. I do not agree with silencing people with the first, uh, you know, killing the First Amendment. And I don't like what BlackRock is doing or Vanguard in terms of housing. I'm exactly opposite of everything that they're telling me I'm supposed to be. And they're supposed to be the good guys. And I'm supposed to be the bad guy. I don't understand this. Yeah, you know, and another thing, too, that, that's kind of interesting and say what you will, you know, in the bigger picture about every single endeavor that Elon's in. But, you know, even when it comes to his positions on, on speech and, and, and communication, I mean, he, he dropped his, his Starlink, you know, right into Ukraine to actually uh, increase their ability to communicate and to have access, which has tremendously helped that country. You know, and honestly, I don't think without that technology, they would still be in it, you know, as much as they actually are. Well, uh, yeah. I'm not saying that Elon is some kind yeah. of uh, saint. I, no. I, don't, I don't look for politicians or businessmen to be saints. I look for monks and people who are religious to be saints. He's a man. He's screwed up. He's got some problems. Some of them are big. Some of them are small. That's fine. But, I, but he's not running around saying, let's kill the gay people. He's not running around saying, let's shut up everyone who doesn't say what I want them to say. The only people who are saying that are the progressives. And they're supposed to be the good guys, and he's supposed to be the bad guy. I don't understand what the progressives, uh, they, what are they thinking? I don't understand that. You know, they went, well, he's not as nice a guy. I never said he was a nice guy. I never said he was a good guy. All I said is he's trying to defend free speech as far as we can tell. And they're pretty sure of it because they're screaming bloody murder about him doing that. They are terrified that he's going to allow anyone. It's not even like he's doing it. It's him possibly letting people have a little more free speech. And that makes him a demon. And it makes them great as they side up with people who are diametrically opposed to everything that... Everything that you were hearing, AOC, Cori Bush, Anna Presley, the entire progressive left, Democratic Socialists of America, everything that they have been elected for, every dollar that they have received as a donation goes in exact opposition of what is happening right now with Twitter. Absolutely diametrically opposes everything they have told the public that they promise, everything that they say they believe. Which makes me have to say, you're, you're watching them lie to your face, and they have your worst interest at heart. And they can't hide it anymore. Well, who, who, who is the one there? The tweet's been going around. It's the lone woman there. Is she the one from MSNBC or is it the CNN that basically says, you know, we're the ones, you know, who are supposed to tell you, you know, what the truth is, you know, I, it was, it was, I'm, I'm summing it up in a way, but I, I, it's been going around. I don't know if you've seen that clip uh, where I haven't, but I, I, I can imagine them saying something like, yeah, it was something it, I, I, it's, it's, oh, well, they have that don't morning. Listen, don't listen to other people because we're the ones who are going to tell you the truth that everyone else is lying. Yeah, somebody probably knows what I'm talking about because it's been going around. Because it's just because they were comparing it to because there's more free speech, there's more information being spread on Twitter, and they're like, you know, well, you don't listen to that. We're the ones who are supposed to give you, you know, they tell you what the truth is. And I'm just like, oh, okay. <laughs> so it, it, um, yeah, I wish I remembered that off the top of my head, but I can't. Yeah, but it, I mean, um, it's just in every aspect of it, and we know that it, the major news media can't say anything any better. They've been caught in how many lies? How many times have we seen? We're, we're seeing it now. 
2017, John Durham is talking about Clinton and the uh, Russia collusion, which we were told every single night, every night with uh, Rachel Maddow, Adam Schiff would come on and would tell us, oh, there's absolute evidence. It's an absolute fact. They told us on the CNN and MSNBC, it's an absolute fact. There's absolute credibility. This really did happen. This is so terrible. And it's a complete lie. And as we find out now, and they are in court now, nope, it's a complete setup. In fact, they were the ones doing it. We have no trust in them. The laptop, uh, where we see that, took two years, two years for the New York Times to finally say, you know why it took two years? Because they wanted people to forget. They wanted them to forget that they lied to them, to their faces, and had the ability to tell the truth and chose not to. Um, there was the Ukraine phone call. There is Hunter Biden's connection to, and, and Joe Biden's connections to China and getting money for influence. There's, the list goes on and on. How can anyone trust the left? I'm not saying that you have to be in love with the right. I'm not saying that you have to be a, a Republican or a conservative. But how can, you, how can you be a progressive in the face of every single lie? BLM steals 66, well, they get donations of $66 million. They buy, what is it, eight houses now that they've bought? With millions of dollars from those donations, they haven't helped any black people anywhere. How can they keep supporting this stuff? I don't understand it. Yeah, I mean, that, that's a good point. And, you know, you, you go back, though, is this, to um, Joe, no, not Joe Biden, but, uh, you know, Barack Obama's, you know, entire, um, his entire presidency. Um, one of the things that he did that seemed to, to always work was he was in a constant you know, campaign against all the bad things, and yet he was the one who created the entire you know, system that was you know, broken when he was in there. And so he'd always say, well, you know, I'm fighting you know, for people's you know, health care, you know, so we got this and that. It's like he passed all this legislation that actually was supposed to fix those problems, and meanwhile he would you know, go out there and have these grand speeches saying that that's what he's fighting for and that's what he's trying to fix. And yet, you know, he, he and that's the perpetual thing. And the problem is, is that I think most of these progressives, they just don't, I don't think they, I, I, I don't, I don't just blame progressives. Maybe I would say that a lot of individuals, you know, don't have the time or, you know, the will to, to be able to dig through, you know, really deeply into these things to find out why, you know, these systems are broken and what has been done by politicians that either have created the circumstances or why, you know, their policies continue to fail, well, you know, because let me, let I mean, me refute but, that. Let me refute that for a second. Yeah. What? Because do you know who Kim Kardashian is? Yeah. Okay. If you know who Kim Kardashian is, you could follow this stuff. If you, if you've spent enough time of your life wasting it on Kim Kardashian, I guarantee you that's enough time to be able to follow these things. And this is so obvious, it's going to take you less time to put these, the same threads I've just put together, to do the same search that I just did about Saudi Arabia and say, hey, they kill gays in Saudi Arabia. Saudi Arabia is on the side of team Twitter. Maybe those aren't the good guys. It, that, it took me 30 seconds. They spend more time on Kim Kardashian on all the entertainers, on the slap between Will Smith and Chris Rock. They wasted all that time on that. It took less than 30 seconds for me to figure out, hmm, Saudi Arabia being on the side of Team Twitter seems rather, what do they call it? Sus. So yeah, they do have enough time to figure it out. They don't want to. Yeah, I'm... And then the other thing, too, is just the continual denial when they're given, you know, truth, you know, from their own side. Um, I mean, I mean, that's the problem, too. It's like all these different, you know, facts about the Russian situation. You know, you could repeat it a million times and it's being, you know, proven to them or even with, you know, the, uh, the you know, the Joe Biden and then Hunter Biden and with a laptop. You know, I mean, it's like in their minds, it's still buried. The fact that that's not true. Um, and then, you know, you look at, you know, the, you've got uh, 
you know, the environmental situation. You had Michael Moore coming out there with the, you know, Planet of the Humans, you know, debunking all the green energy, you know, uh, that is continually being pushed, you know, um, without any sort of results. And yet, you know, you, you, you see this information, you know, being put presented right in front of and nobody's refuting. It's just like, okay, look, you know what? We're going to continue to be, you know, very tribalistic on our side. Yeah, we're wrong, but guess what? You know what? We want to, you know, pick this side regardless of whether it's good or not, you know, for the environment. And they just double down on, 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 on failure. It's just, it's, it's very frustrating. Well, Jason, you didn't see this early. I don't think you were here earlier and I understand uh, the holiday, but I was talking about it earlier that this is why we have people like Quentin Merritt, which I did a video on. Someone who is so self-absorbed, so disconnected from reality, so much of, an, of a follower of Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, her mantra that truth doesn't matter, feelings matter. She just, this is what that kid is all about. We're teaching them. We're going to the kids at the age of five years of age, pumping this crap into their brains so that, that when they grow up, like Quentin has, they're going to come out and they're going to lie to your face. They're going to assume things that aren't true. They're just going to say whatever makes them feel good because that's what they want. And when they do that, they don't care about the consequences because they don't realize there are consequences. And they're losing freedom, and they're taking the rest of us with them. It, that individual, was that the one? That, are, are you talking about the person with the, the Ben Shapiro debate, or is that yeah, somebody else? that's Quentin, yeah, with the Ben okay, Shapiro. Okay, yeah. I saw, I saw your whole, whole thing on that. That was actually a, a pretty good um, uh, video you, you did up on that there. I thought it was I pretty impressive. So. And the, the one thing, you know, that just took, took me back, you know, when I'm listening to that debate, I just, it, it, it should have... I, I think at some point, you know, when you have people who are claiming to be these, you know, absolute experts, and the instant that person, you know, does a low blow and says something about Ben Shapiro's wife, I mean, I would have, I would have actually just stepped back more or less and actually focused on that that subject right there, you know, because he was talking about, you know. And he obviously he lost the conversation at that point. And oh, then, he had lost it before then, yeah. Yeah, he did. And the thing was, though, that it bothered me the most was that Ben Shapiro, he almost basically went back to the topic that he was he was actually trying, you know, to talk on. Like he he brought it back to being the serious point. But the fact was, though, is it was already brought down to to a very low point. And I think it should have just been emphasized the fact, though, is that. You have an individual there who's claiming, you know, that, you know, was, I think, queer, um, obviously was looking for, um, you he know. He, he, he says in his follow-up that he is black and queer. Yeah, and, you know, for somebody, it's just ironic, though. It's just somebody who, who has those feelings, you know, and has been, you know, su supposedly objectified, well, not objectified, but, um, you know, is is a victim you know of you know heterosexual society i would say you know that that they believe you know he would believe that that, that that's his his enemy and but yet you know here you now he goes and he attacks somebody else's sexuality and somebody else's lifestyle you know in the exact same ways that he himself is accusing others to be doing to him you know and when you look at it like that you're like Okay, you want to you you want me, you know, to treat you civilly in your lifestyle and to look at your lifestyle. And the simple fact was is that nobody was arguing, you know, about his lifestyle, you know, and saying and belittling them for what they they feel or thought. Yet he had the 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 you know the the gall to actually do that exact same thing to Ben Shapiro. You know what I mean? And I'm just like. Uh, that's where the conversation in my part should have automatically, you know, just pointed out the hypocrisy where the guy stood. Well, um, it did. It did. Look yeah. at the reaction of the of everyone in the audience made it very clear that oh, he yeah. was wrong and that he had lost. And then in his own, as I went through in the video of him, his follow up on it, he tells us the reason why he was even up there was that he had malicious intent. He wanted to hurt Ben Shapiro. 
That was his only reason for being uh, up and speaking. He didn't care about the subject at hand. He didn't know what was being said. He didn't know about the data that was being provided. He was just there to try and hurt Ben Shapiro. He was there to be vicious and cruel and, and, and vindictive and tiny. That's what he wanted because that's how he felt. And he felt he's justified in being vicious and small and cruel. And that's what we are teaching kids. That's where this, the, the problem I have with the kids being taught about critical race theory at the age of five, being taught about Common Core at the age of five, is we are not teaching them about the fundamentals of life. We're teaching them how to be mean and cruel and sexist and racist at a very young age so that when they get older, that's all they're going to know. And freedom will never be part of the conversation. And Twitter is guaranteeing it's never going to be part of the conversation. And that should scare people. Yeah, I mean, that, that was the, that same you know, behavior that it, that individual had there is this actually the same behavior that is taught at Bank University from their sociology department. It's the same ideology. Yes. And it spawns out individuals who spew the same hatred and the same you know, rhetoric. And, you know, when confronted, you know, with any sort of, I mean, they can't be confronted. They're, they're, they cannot actually engage in conversation, um, you know, without those, you know, low blow insults to other individuals. Which is why I'm protesting the SUNY Broom event on May 3rd, because of what happened at SUNY Binghamton, which I did show earlier in the program. It, it's all the same small minded, cruelty, vicious sexist, racist ideology. we got to stand up to that stuff. We've got to stand up to it. And I don't mind if I have to be the only one standing out there protesting, that's fine. But that's the answer to that, is to peacefully stand up and go, no, I don't agree with this, this vicious feeling, you know, this viciousness that's only going to make, so selfishly, make them feel good. Quentin felt great because he's, he has a selfish feeling of like, oh, see, everyone paid attention to me, and I feel good because this is what I wanted to say. I wanted to hurt him. Yeah, you, you know, you're 100% right about the selfishness because that's what that, that produces, and I think that's where sociology goes nowadays. It's always about the individual, you know, and it's not any individual. Um, the, the selfishness and the self-centered, I, I think it really depends on, you know, your, you know, like what you know your the color of your skin your you know your sexuality your gender all those things you know how they identify actually will depends on how self-centered actually you can be because the more check boxes you know uh you check the more narcissistic you are actually allowed to be yeah you know like and, quentin is not only black he's also queer as he self-identified so that yeah. means he can say anything and it's okay it's okay to hurt people about their sexuality because he's black and queer so that gives him the right and it's okay for um the people of blm to take people's money and buy houses with it because well they're black so it's okay it's okay to burn down cities like minneapolis and uh, uh seattle and portland and Austin, it's okay to burn them down because they're black, so that's okay. And people died, but it's okay because there were black people doing this. So that justifies it all. No, no, we gotta stop and we gotta say, no, that doesn't justify a goddamn thing. That's not, I'm sorry. I, oops, broke my own rule. <laughs> yeah. No, it's a very, it's, I know you're getting emotion on this. It's a really passionate thing for you. It should be. And I don't know how, and that's why I'm so frustrated with people on the left, which is why I beg and plead every single episode for them to come on and try and explain to me how they see this. How do they get past this every day? What is the mental gymnastics they have to go through to make this make sense? Because it just doesn't make sense. It's, yeah, I mean, it's insane. Well, you're pro. Your protest, you know, at what was going to be BCC there, right? Yeah. I mean, it is against, you know, the indoctrination, not just the indoctrination, but almost the, you know, yeah, it's an indoctrination of malignant narcissists. I mean, you don't, I mean, why, it's just. And they're going to call like, the cops on me. 
And they've already told me they're going to call the cops on me. Yeah, but I mean, you're you're fighting to stop people, you know, from creating individuals, you know, like the, the, that guy there, you know, and it's just like there's uh, being so self-centered, so hatred, you know, towards anybody, you know, except for those who, you know, they believe, well, you know, according- in their own it is right in their own religion, I suppose. I mean, that's really what it is. Well, it is a religion because, I mean, members of PLOT have said publicly, I'm not black. They tell me that all the time. I'm a white supremacist. I'm like Larry Elder. I'm a, I'm a white supremacist. I'm like, really? The mirror doesn't say that. Neither does my parents. But, yeah. but it's because it's when you dare to say anything that isn't approved, that in any way diminishes their power then you are a problem that's why when people say saudi arabia kills gays they go what no no i'm not talking about that that that's we're talking about twitter same friggin' thing same thing what you think saudi arabia is going to let gays get onto twitter and talk no they're going to silence them and they and the power of twitter is about silencing people so they're going to use their influence to silence gays whether they're doing it right this second or whether they're going to do it in another month because they're waiting for everyone to stop paying attention to Elon Musk. I don't know. But that's what they're doing. And does that make it any better? Does it help anyone? I mean, I, it's something I always ask these progressives whenever they come out and they're jumping around screaming at me. I always ask them, and, and how is anything that you've suggested going to help anyone? And their answer is, well, you're just racist. <laughs> yeah. No conversation. Can't have it. Got to shut you down. You know? That's why they have cancel culture, because they can't answer. When you ask them a legitimate question, not to try and belittle them, when you ignore their, their insults, when you go past that and they see that can't work, and you're like, but I'm asking a serious question, and I want a serious answer. What do they do? They shut down, they try and cancel you, and they shut down the conversation. That's why Antonio Delgado won't speak to me. It's why Josh Riley and uh, Francis Colone won't answer me. Why they won't come on to this program. They won't talk. Why? Because they don't have an actual answer. And they don't want anyone to see that, so they're going to hide. And they're going to say, well, no, you're just racist, you're just uh, too biased. My bias has nothing to do with the question I just asked. If you're so confident and you're so right and you have so much proof, just answer the question. They can't. Yeah, it's, it, it is this question. I mean, we're going to see a lot in this election. And, and one of the thoughts is, is that how, what position is the, the Democrats going to take on a lot of these issues? Because it seems to, to me that um, things are rolling. They're, they're, they are rolling back. Um, and they're, they're, they're having to step away from the progressives on certain policies. Um, Don't believe that. Don't believe huh? that. Do well, not believe that. That's well, not what true. about this one? I, see, this is one thing we were, we were talking about the other day, and I, told, I was saying about um, the situation with the oil, and I said that there's, there's nothing that Joe Biden can do except for freaking, you know, to frack, to drill, and to drill, and that's really like it. And, you know, we were, we we're discussing, he says, well, there's no way he's going to, you know, change his position on it. Well, sure enough, he's actually now starting to actually – change the position because now he's actually starting to open up leases um, on federal land that he actually wasn't. Now he's not going full, you know, full board on it, but he has backtracked enough in my opinion to say that, you know, I mean, things are starting to really hit the fan if he's actually, you know, moving that direction because that he realized at this point, that's the only way to go. But I mean, really, what's your thoughts on that? But he really hasn't. He's done, uh, he's done the very least he possibly could to be able to get uh to get someone to say exactly what you said. He's doing just enough yep. to make it seem like he's going somewhere. But, and at the same time, what we see, and this happens in every single election. For 15 years, I've watched this happen in every election. Oh, look, we're going to fix this for you. We've got a solution. We're going to fix this. Here's this proposal that does almost nothing. But we're going to give it to you. It's so great. Two weeks after the election. By the way, we killed that. That thing died. It didn't go anywhere. No, we're not doing it. We're going in an entirely different direction. Happens yeah. every single election. 
Yeah, so what so what you're saying right now is, is that some of these leases, he knows that he's he's going to get creamed on it. And so what he's doing, he's basically trying to take away that out of the narrative by actually um, having them release new new leases for yeah. these uh, private lands. Yeah. And well, you're saying 50, after this... Here's 50 leases. Hey, here's 50 leases. By the way, did you give them any of the leases for the pipelines? Did you give them any leases for the roads? No, no, I freed up more land. Yeah, but they can't get to the land. They can't get the, if they find oil, they can't get it back. Oh, don't worry about that. I'll take care of that after the election. I'll take care of it. But you can't say I'm not freeing up the leases. See, I freed up leases. Yeah, you did one out of 20 steps and you only did barely one of them. And now as soon as the election's over, you're just going to ignore it because you don't have to worry about getting another election through. Out of odds, you know, because of this amount of pressure on the oil situation and gas, what would you think, like just out of a percentage of odds, that the Keystone Pipeline may be put on the table for the Biden administration? Never going to happen. I know it's never. I mean, we're we talking one in, you know, I mean, there's a, you know, a one, 20% chance. <laughs> one in 10,000? One in 10,000, yeah. That, that, is, that is a very, very low percentage. <laughs> that's, that's so dead and so gone, it's not going to happen. And instead, they're actually looking at another form of ethanol. Ethanol yep. has come back. You know, why, yep. you know why they stopped talking about ethanol after about 2009? Yeah, because gas was so cheap that it, it's totally inefficient no. to actually produce. Actually, that's not why. Why? Because everyone started doing studies on ethanol, and it was deoxygenating the Gulf of Mexico. It was actually destroying the oceans. Ethanol actually takes oxygen out and kills all the plants and animals in the ocean. It is oh. actually deadly to the environment like not even like kind of sort of it is demonstrably is deadly that, what was the reasoning behind it was it because of the fertilizer that's used that goes into the rivers or no it's the way the, it's the chemical combination the runoff of making ethanol the byproduct which okay. is dumped into the rivers in particular the mississippi goes into the ocean and once it hits water it combines and steals all the oxygen from the water, uh, which kills all the plants. Right. Yeah, that's, that's, that's crazy. Yeah, I didn't know that. I mean, I know that it was, you know, um, very costly to do. And basically, you know, gas prices would have to be up to like $5, you know, or $4 a gallon to actually be, you know, profitable just from a manufacturing standpoint without huge, heavy subsidies. Um, but, you know, the, the, the thing is, too, is, is we, I think we spoke about this last week, is that right now, um, farmers are not planting corn because of the amount of fertilizer that it, I mean, this is corn for food. They're not planting corn for food. They're actually planting soy over it because of the amount of um, the amount of fertilizer that you actually need to produce corn. And so they can actually make more of a profit off of uh, producing soy right now. And so nobody's producing it. And so the irony is, is that now you have the Biden administration, you know, now going to produce more corn, which is going to require more fertilizer, which we already do not have enough on, which really should be utilized to actually be used for food. So he's going to take it out of that industry or our, our food supply. And now he's going to pump it into, you know, our fuel tank. It's just, it's so ridiculous. It's just, it, it uh, and nobody's called him out on this either. I, I haven't heard enough yet. No, no one's going to mention it because no one's thinking about the chain of events because again, consequences, no one talks about the consequences. So to make ethanol, what do you need? Corn. What do we eat? Corn. What do, what do our animals, grazing animals eat? Corn. So we're going to take, so we have less corn available, it, even without thinking about the soy, about them planting soy. Just thinking there's less fertilizer in the world, so there's going to be a smaller crop, and we're gonna, out of that smaller crop, we're going to take an even larger portion of corn to make ethanol so we can put it in cars so that might kind of sort of drop the cost of gas, except you need more gas because ethanol is, is about 25% less efficient than gasoline itself. So it takes more gasoline, which means more ethanol as well, to replace what you're, the gasoline that you don't have, and you have less food during a food shortage. This is a brilliant plan. I can't see how this could possibly go wrong. That's the chain of events. Yeah, the the negative feedback loop on, you know, this is just, it's insane. And it's like, 
you know, <laughs> you connect the dots and you find out basically you're just shooting yourself in the foot by, you know, trying to cure. I mean, they're trying to cure the gas problem basically by then creating a food shortage problem. That's really essentially what they're doing. Yeah. Um, and they're having a food shortage problem primarily because, well, we don't have enough, you know, oil and gas, and that's not, you know, being done in the United States. And if it was, guess what? We'd have enough, you know, if we had enough oil and, and gas in the United States and we were the lead producer there, then we'd also be a lead producer of, uh, of um, fertilizers as well, too. But instead, you know, nobody wants to invest in the United States when it comes to, to, to fuels and energies because they know that the Democrat Party in the United States is going to put them out of business. So why would they invest here when, you know, they could do it in China or they could do it in Russia? And they 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 believe that's a safer bet, which is really crazy that you would actually think that it's a safer bet to take your money and invest it in an industry in Russia and in China rather than the United States. But that's how how crippling the Democrat Party comes when it comes to their 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 energy policies, you know, in the United States. It's just uh, it's and it's going to cause the world to starve because of the Democrats Party's you know, energy. And like I said, it's, it's just this huge feedback loop. And if you don't connect the dots and understand how the entire economy works and these cycles interconnect, then you're not going to get it, you know? And a lot of people don't. Well, just to make sure everyone still remembers, because they told us this. They told us exactly what was going to happen. They're very, it's funny, because they're very honest about this, but they know that the news media is going to bury it. It's on the screen right now from Politico, 2012. April 5th, 2012, they were talking about Barack Obama's 2008 statement. Under my plan, electricity rates would necessarily skyrocket. They told us they were going to skyrocket the cost. If someone wants to build a coal-fired coal -fired power plant, they can. It's just that it will bankrupt them. Under my plan, electricity rates would necessarily skyrocket. From January of 2008, in his come in his interview with the San Francisco Chronicle editorial board. Guess what? That's what Joe Biden's doing. Joe Biden, who was the vice president of Obama, who wanted to skyrocket, necessarily skyrocket the cost of energy. That's what they're doing. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, it, it's just amazing that they, they, they said that you, you're reading right directly from an article that that was their plan. That was their goal. Biden said it, you know, many times. That's what they said during the, the entire, um, you know, primary process. Every Democrat was up there saying they wanted to put, you know, oil, you know, companies out of business. Mm -hmm. um, and even during the pandemic, you know, they, they did not want um, American fracking, you know, frackers uh, and our oil and our gas industry to make it through the pandemic. If they were going to go bankrupt because, you know, of the obviously when we everything was shut down, they couldn't make any money because they weren't selling anything. And guess who? I mean. I mean, who you know who stayed afloat? Well, the Russians stayed afloat, and so did the the Saudis and the entire Middle East. All those, although um, they started outputting deliberately, trying to tank our tank our oil and energy sector, and they did. They did with the helps of the Democrat Party. They were able to align with them to actually sink our party. And they've told us they were going to do this all along. Yes. And yeah, and they told us they were doing it. So when you see people, you know, in, in these third world countries, everybody's going to be, you know, being hungry, you know, very there shortly. Are already, there are already food riots. Yeah. Yeah. And all this is because, you know, of the Democrat, you know, party and system and because of what were their position on energy. You United know? States leads. We lead the world. Yeah. And we're leading the world negatively. We're leading the world down into a very vicious, dark period of time. And... You know, that's why I say people don't remember this. I remember, I remember the statements. I remember it's one of the weird things. I have a great memory for politics. I remember what people say in 2008. I do remember, and I can, and I know how to search for it. They said these things, and they are doing these things. And when I don't understand how people, progressives, look at this and go, hey, it's a great idea. Let's keep doing it. And it's like, but every single empirical piece of evidence that we can pull out says this is actually more destructive than what we were doing before this. Everything you're planning is hurting people across the world. This is not helping anyone. And they're like, don't worry, we're just going to keep doing it. 
it, you like know, it. and the thing is, is I think that's kind of interesting about the situation, you know, because we, you know, we, we, we go into the, this political cycle this year, you know, and we, we're forecasting that the Democrats are going to get, you know, walloped pretty good, you yeah. know, when it comes to this. But the, the real question then, you know, I mean, <laughs> besides for that, then what happens, you know, the following, you know, year with the presidential election? Now, if Biden's not there, then what are they going to run another primary? And then what positions are they going to take to the primary? Are, gonna, are they going to, you know, reprimary and, and come out to the, their, you know, radical left, you know, group and say the exact same thing, saying, well, we're going to put oil companies out of business. We're going to put, you know, I mean, it's, yes. I, I mean, yes, are they going to double will. down on the on that? I mean, yes. I can't imagine, you know, how the Democrats would be able to survive um, at all if, if, if going in that same, same, same direction when everybody now is able to feel the pain of, of their policies. Because they're going to tell you that it's good for the planet. They're going to tell you it's good for the global, eco- uh, the global ecology. And they're going yeah. to tell you that this is great green energy. This is helping us get to transition to green energy. And Kamala Harris is going to be the one who's going to be saying it. Because Joe yeah. Biden won't be there, if I am correct, in my prediction. And they're going to say, oh, no, no, it's okay. Don't worry. I know you feel a little pain, but that's okay. Because this pain is temporary and we're going to fix the planet. This is good for greenhouse gases. This is helping us out. Don't worry. We we promise you, we're going to be right eventually. You just have to wait a little bit longer. Same thing that they also said during Obama's first term when he was running second term. Don't worry. It'll all work out okay. We just need to wait a little bit longer. Well, we gave him eight years and it didn't get better. It got worse. It doesn't get better. But that's their excuse. That's, they're playing on people's emotions, saying, oh, well, you know, I trust you. I'm supposed to trust you. You're, you know, you're elected, so you must be smart. You must know something that I don't know. No, they don't. No, they don't. I've known far too many p- politicians for far too many years, too many decades. No, they're not smarter. They don't know more. And they're just as much a, a, an idiot as the guy walking down the street. They just want more power. Yeah, I, I hear you. There's there's just one more thing I wanted to talk about. It's sure. uh, and you probably already mentioned it. I know you. I, I think I, I saw something you covered a little bit on the on the bird flu. Um, now, did you hear about the? I don't know if you mentioned that the New York State now is not going to allow you to actually buy chickens um, for your own uh, growth because of the bird flu. Uh, I don't know that they said. Uh, not that they're not going to let people get them. Uh, I know the bird flu is in 30 states, including New York State. I did start off talking about that. Um, 20 million chickens and turkeys have been destroyed. I did not hear that they're not letting people buy. We, I yeah, saying, so I, I heard, we were, I was talking to somebody, he went to Tractor Supply, and they were saying that they're no longer going to be able to sell um, the chickens to uh, customers due to the fact of, uh, of the, because of the bird flu. That's new. I did not, wow. Yeah, you'll have to look that up because that was something I just heard. I hadn't had time to really dig into it and look it up, but that's that's pretty big um, because obviously, um, you know, here we're coming into a time where everybody's, you know, kind of scrambling and they want to get their own chickens and eggs because cost of everything. And now they're not going to be able to do it because the government's going to prohibit them from doing it because they don't want them to spread the bird flu. So uh, I see that they on the 25th of March. They banned all fowl shows and uh, actually show on the screen. Uh, they were banning poultry shows and exhibitions yep. uh, three days ago. Let's see. There was a guard. Uh, let's see. This is from Albany, according to WGRZ. Mm. Yep. No more. You cannot buy poultry anymore. The New York State Department of Agriculture and Markets um, banned all fat, all poultry sales, auctions, meats, and swaps until further notice. Yep. So if you were thinking about getting chickens to be able to get eggs and food, nope, not anymore. New York State has refused. So that... Yeah. So when I was telling people, you know, it's funny, I started people telling, telling people that about chickens and getting extra poultry and watching out for the price back in January, and yep. here it is now, 
now you can't even offset the inflation of that food no. because they just stopped you. Yeah. And I That's see insane. that. And then the thing is, too, is, is that, you know, there was no way for anybody really to plan ahead for this. Um, not in New York anyway, because you, I mean, I guess you could, you, you can get chickens throughout the entire, pretty much all the way right up to the summer. Um, and, 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 and get them. But obviously the best time to get them is right in the spring. And so they can grow strong up to the winter time. Um, if you're going to use them for layers anyway, if you're going to have them, have them lay eggs for you. But now, um, anybody who's had hopes, you know, doing that in spring, uh, well, you, you can't, you know? Um, and that, that's, that, that really sucks. And, and I, I think that really hurts a lot of people too, who have, um, who who sell eggs off their own property and have done so so they have a whole you know kind of little business you know maybe they have a few you know hundred chickens or something like that and they just do it kind of like a you know a side thing they're not going to be able to replenish their uh their flock at all so i mean it's just uh, just crazy no i do know a couple people who have been selling eggs for the last six seven months now um yeah and so they've been telling me a lot about what's going on with that market so it, it, it's interesting, and yeah, I'm gonna really. I, I kind of wonder about the crackdown on that. I wonder if, if even the eggs themselves being sold will be disallowed. I know poultry is that is our eggs considered poultry pro products unless yes. be sold by, you know, a roadside now or what? You know? Yes, they are. Huh? They, yes, they're considered a poultry and fowl. Yes. Yeah. So you can't. So hey. <laughs> So it's going to be so it's illegal for anybody to you know basically sell them from their property just kind of like on a side deal. That's just that's that that's crazy. Yeah. It, it so means... now so so they have to feed these birds, you know, and now they can't get any any money from it. So food prices for the birds themselves is going to go through the roof, as we already know. And now they can't actually even unload the eggs and sell them um, in New York State. That's just oh my god. Yeah. So they're just they're gonna have to just kill the chickens then. That's just that sucks. They've already killed twenty million of them. Oh wow. So when I say so when I've been saying and it's amazing, but when I've been saying that people have to watch out, poultry prices are gonna go through the roof, everyone's been like, eh, hey, Mike, uh, you know I'm not sure you know what you're talking about there. Yeah, I'm not kidding. And Pixie, uh and just someone who was watching this, I'm glad I could help you with that uh, and double check that. That's what the program's here for. But yeah, it's crazy, man. Can you imagine? Remember what wings used, were costing during the middle of the pandemic? Can you imagine what they're going to cost now? Yeah, I mean, I think we're going to, uh, yeah, I don't Prices know. are going to go even higher. I remember that getting wings, um, being out, going out and getting wings, they cost like, Fifteen, seventeen dollars for six wings. Expect the price to be higher than that. That's the yeah, kind it, of interesting. That's inflation we're talking about because it's not just uh, before we had trouble transporting. No, no. Now it's the cost of transporting is up, and there are less of them available. Price is going to skyrocket. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, this is this is nuts. Yeah. So, well, I. Have that was the last subject I had there, but this has uh, been a pretty good conversation. So I guess I'll uh, That's what I look it up forward there. to. That's what I look forward to. So I'm happy that you called in. So, oh, all right. I'll let you go, Mike. Have a good one. All right. Thank you, Jason. And, yep, and happy Easter. So, folks, uh, as you can see, you can always call into the program. Everyone can call in. There are always subjects that I can't follow everything. I follow a lot. Uh, but we try and let you be as informed as possible. And again, the major media is failing on letting the people know what's going on. Pixie, our, in our audience, Pixie Petal, which I'm very happy to have you with us here today, is mentioning that they didn't even know that this happened three days ago, April 14th. The New York all of a sudden, nope, you can't sell chickens. You cannot sell chickens to individuals commercially. They're still letting that go through for now, for now. But they're killing lots of chickens and they're doing that with turkeys as well. And now if it's a bird, you can't have, and they banned all of the auctions, sales. You can't meet someone and swap chickens for eggs. You can't sell eggs. They, they just got rid of it all. 
Can you imagine that we're going to have, that they're going to, New York State, under appointed Governor Holchul, is going to be sending around police officers and state troopers to check on whether or not where you got your eggs. They're going to be check. That's, that's what this means. That some, that some state trooper can come up and go, hey, you've got eggs. Where did you get them from? Where, where, where'd you get those? You have a dozen eggs. Oh my God, you have too many eggs. Where'd you get those eggs from? Come on, you got to go down to the station so we can figure out where you got these eggs from because you're in trouble and whoever sold them to you is in trouble. But hey, New York State's super free because it's a progressive state. It's one of the progressive capitals of the United States. Yeah, Mike mentions, <laughs> do chickens get the mask mandate? Who knows? You can, only, oops, you can only buy essential chickens. Uh, you know, I just don't, don't get this. There are better ways, and I understand it's a problem. Like I said, it's in 30 states now. It's a problem. But can you imagine? Oops, what's that? I had something that was bad. Um, yeah, now they're going to stamp the eggs like they stamp cartons of cigarettes or something. I just... This is what I mean when I say all the things that the progressives, they promise you something, they promise gun control. I was just talking with my friends over at the Liberty First Foundation. And we were talking about the promise of the ghost guns. Oh, they're going to make you safe. Well, didn't you say exactly the same words when you said that the New York Safe Act, that's going to make you safe when they went across the state and said, gun magazines, if you only have 10 bullets, you're going to be safe. No, one, that's going to stop the mass shootings. Then they said, oh, well, red flags, that'll stop the mass shootings. Then they said, oh, ghost guns, that'll stop the mass shootings. Then we have a mass shooting. They're lying to you. They're, none of that is actually making you safer. Now they're coming over to this next thing. Now you can't buy eggs. And I, I guarantee you soon they're going to be going to everyone's backyard and going, do you have chickens back there? Let me see your chickens. Well, got to kill all those chickens. Why? Just kill them because it's New York State. We got to kill all the chickens. You can't have a chicken. God forbid you have a chicken that the government didn't say is good for you first. I mean, come on. I get it. I, I mean, I get it, but at the same time, the way they're doing these things, and how many people are going to be shocked when all of a sudden there's going to be state troopers showing up at your door going, hey, your neighbor said you had chickens, right? We want to see them all. We got to kill them all. Oh, we're not going to pay you for them. You're not going to get any money for it. We're just going to kill them. That's it. We're going to kill your chickens. We're going to take all your eggs. Oh, you don't get paid for that. You don't get anything for that. We're just really sorry. Oops, you know. We're being, pre we're being preventative. It's just in case. Just in case. Just in case something happened. Just in case they might have gotten mixed up with any other bird. Just in case. Doesn't matter how you have them stored. This is, this is what we get for having a progressive government. This is what we get for Governor Kathy Hochul. And they're doing such a piss poor job of telling the public. Because uh, guess what? If you really want to protect people from this, this should be big news. We know that people for at least a year now have been building up farms in their backyards. They've been doing backyard farming. They've been getting chickens and cattle for, for years now. Definitely in the last year. and. When they've done that, you would think that they would take the time and make sure that this is big news, that everyone is covering this, that everyone is reading about this, that they are making sure that it's in all the news media. So, so that if they're really that concerned and they want to stop the bird from, from going from one neighbor to another neighbor to another, then why aren't you telling everyone on the major news media networks and saying, hey, bird flu, do you know how many people even know there's a bird flu going on right now? Because I do. It's like one in 10 people really know that there's a bird flu going on. There's only one in 10 people who know that there's been 20 million chickens that have been 
chickens and turkeys that have been destroyed. People don't even know this is going on. And they're supposed to be protecting you? How about the first thing in protection comes when notification? Just telling people so that they can be prepared, so that they can be aware, so they can try and protect themselves. Oh, you guys are funny. Put... I love the jokes. I love the jokes. What did Pixel say? Uh, Pixel says, if somebody comes to my house and tries to kill my chickens, my daughter will go ballistic. She incubated and raised them last year. They're like her kids. Don't let people know that you have those. Pixie, just don't let people know that you have chickens. Hide them. And make sure that they're isolated from other birds so that they don't get the bird flu. Again, I'm not a uh, veterinarian. I'm not someone, I'm not a farmer. So double check with farmers. Talk to your veterinarian to make sure what you need to do to protect your chickens. Because I'm not the source for that. But I can tell you what the government's doing. And what the government's doing seems to be half-baked. It just seems half-baked. Half but I'm not surprised because, I mean, just like no one's telling you that Biden is doing exactly what Obama told you he was going to do. Necessarily skyrocket the cost of energy. Does anyone feel good about that? Because that's what's happening right now. So let me introduce you to the Epson EcoTank Pro. We're talking a heavy duty high volume. Our state is taking no, more action no. today as it tries to. Okay, that came out of nowhere. Didn't expect that. Anyway. Oh, it's just crazy, folks. And it's upsetting. It really, really is. But. We've been on for three and a half hours, uh, four and a half hours, four and a half hours, and I love speaking with everybody. I really do. Um, unless someone wants to call in right now, uh, it is Easter. I want everyone to have a great dinner. Hope you have great loved ones with you. Uh, we do this every week as long as we've got the money to keep the lights on, to keep the internet paid. We're going to keep doing this, we hope. Please consider subscribing and sharing, but subscribing especially. We want to get to 1,234 subscribers. Not a huge number, but it matters a lot to us. It makes a big difference. And uh, we want you to be safe out there. Remember, every time you go to the store, buy 10% more of everything that you're going to get. I think it's going to be helpful. I love you guys. I want you all to be well. And I look forward to seeing you. Not, I'll do some videos throughout the week. And then we'll see you next Sunday at 2.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Happy Easter, everyone.